を締め切りましたゲームを開始します難易度ハート67Hello, Nomads, and welcome to episode 27 of the Nomads of Fantasy podcast. My name is Brandon. I am your host, and I'm also here with Eric. If you don't want to die, you'll have to keep playing the games. Oh, nice. Ah, Dave. Just as water can overfill a container, madness is all the same. Okay, wow.、Uh, coming in spooky. <laughs> starting out strong. Yeah, I don't even know where Dave's、uh, quote came from. Where, where was that? That's in a... Arisu. Quote okay, from okay. somewhere in there. I don't know.、Uh, okay,、uh, yeah. We're talking about Alice in Borderlands. And this is a random choice. I am fully aware when I asked you guys、uh, to watch this.、Um, I knew that a lot of people had, well, yeah, I would say a lot of people haven't watched it. And I was looking at the success of Squid Game, the Squid Game that's、uh, popular on Netflix. And I was thinking.、Popular. Yeah, and、I've, I'm about half. It's exploding.、Through. It's crazy. Yeah, and I'm watching it, and it's good.、Um, and it just kept reminding me so much of Alice in Borderlands. I'm like, honestly, I think I would like it for you guys to watch this so that way, when you guys do watch Squid Game, we can do a contrast compare. And maybe we can even talk about that show. But a lot of love going out for Squid Game. And I thought Alice in Borderlands is fairly similar. In、a lot of ways, so it'd be cool to make、um, a conversation about that because I'm sure a lot of people are probably enjoying this genre with these deadly games, especially like from、mm-hmm. Eastern production shows. And then people are like, What else could we watch? So we're here to kind of guide you and give you a conversation about Alice in Borderlands, the good and the bad, and all that stuff.、Um, Yeah, so, but anyways. Be- and the ugly. Before we get into it, let's, <laughs> let's, let's,、uh, let's just kind of catch up on what we've been doing. So, Dave, let's start with you. What have you been up to since we last recorded? Sure.、Uh, had a sick kid earlier this week. So,、uh, I did what any regular parent would do you know, go get the kid from school, bring him home. Put him on the couch and then put on Fallout 76 to、uh, make him fall asleep. <laughs> of course. <laughs> no, they had the, the Halloween stuff this week,、um, which is kind of annoying because, like, to get some of the unlocks from this week, you have to actually have people visit your camp and get candy out of your trick or treat bowl. But、mm-hmm. you can also go to other people's camps and do it. But what kind of sucks is that you're reliant on people actually playing the game and coming to your camp and. Doing stuff. So there's a big hubbub about the popcorn machine this week in the land of Fallout.、Um, nothing too exciting there, though. Just your standard Halloween quest line that, you know, you run a couple couple missions, you do your dailies, you do your weeklies, and get out of there. So,、uh, so Fallout 76,、uh, transitioning from Resident Evil, I decided to throw on、uh, a CRPG. Uh, it's a little older,、uh, called Pillars of Eternity.、Uh, Pillars of Eternity 2 is out now, but. Yeah.、Uh, I is, started, that your, uh, is that your taste breaker for this week? That is my taste breaker to get that, <laughs> wash that dirty Resident <laughs> Evil out of my filthy mouth.、Um, came out on Windows back in 2015. It's on Game Pass. Xbox、right? in 2017. Yeah. Yeah. But the second,、mm-hmm. I started to play the second one and they start asking you questions about what happened in the first one. So I figured I should go back and play the first. But this was an, it's an Obsidian game, spiritual successor to Baldur's Gate. Plays a lot the same where you got that orthographic top down view. There's a ton of RPG stuff in it.、Um, this one was actually kick started back in 2012 and at the time, like,、uh, broke records. It, Funded over like $4 million at the time. So it was pretty,、wow. it was pretty big and、uh, came out pretty good, I would say.、Uh, there's, you know, your standard fantasy stuff where, you know, you got to pick up and read and get into the universe and all that stuff.、Um, I'm not too far into it, so I don't want to, you know, get too much into it. But as far as a taste breaker, it's a good one.、Uh, <laughs> it's got some, your standard turn based combat. Or turn based combat. It's like、uh, Knights of the Old Republic where you kind of get to queue up things or you can pause it mid combat and you know, set your guys up to do stuff. So,、uh, playing that one. And then this week, 
uh, actually, I think it was today on Game Pass, uh, a new indie game called Unpacking came out. Uh, it yes, is I a, want to check that one out. It is a Zen puzzle game about the familiar experience of pulling possessions out of boxes and fitting them into a new home. It is part See, pu- puzzle box that fitting. Sounds fun. Yeah. Sounds fun to do in a game, but in real life, I don't want to do that. No, real life, it's <laughs> a lot more tiring. But this one's very chill, uh, very zen, where it's just playing some cool lo-fi music, and you're just unpacking boxes and putting stuff away, basically, where you know, you're know you filling out your kitchen, you're filling out your bathroom, going through. I haven't, I got a, you know, a couple levels into it, and... You know, I was passing the controller back with the kids, you know, letting this, you know, one kid unpack a box, next kid unpack a box. And the zenness of it was just, you know, I was falling asleep. I'll be, I'll be honest. Um, cause it is, <laughs> cause it is so zen. But then I was woken up to children fighting over the controller and kicking each other. So that the zenness ended very quickly, but it seems like it's a really cool game. Uh, it's got a nice pixel art design to it. Um, it was developed by Witchbeam Games, uh, published by Humble Games. So I'm sure it'll be in a Humble Bundle at some point. But it's a nice, nice, chill, just relax game. Kind of like a playing a puzzle, Luminous or Tetris or whatever, to just kind of not kill the time, but, you know, chill out and play something where you can just jump in for a little bit. Is there is there like an actual objective or is it just all about the Zen? It's mostly about the Zen. When you get to the end of a level, some things will be highlighted in red where you have to specifically put them. Like, you can't put the keyboard in the bathtub. You have to put the keyboard what? on the desk. Or, I, you know, put stuffed animals in the shower or random stuff like that. So, I think at the end of the well, level, like there's certain write some, stuff. Write some songs while I'm taking a bath. I, you know, I can't. Like, you do you. Don't yuck my yum. <laughs> can't help you there, but... uh that seemed to be like the only real, you know, gameplay mechanic in it other than just rotating stuff and putting it on shelves or putting it on, you know, desks and stuff like that. So that one's a cool one. Uh, definitely we'll be playing that more as it is free on Game Pass. So uh, recommend that one to, uh, you know, break your taste if you've been playing something gory and nasty. Uh, play some Good unpacking. And other than that, now I've been watching a lot of Alice in Borderlands this week, so got all that in. Sweet. How about you, Eric? Well, to uh, continue our our Game Pass, our free Game Pass advertising, I checked out another new game that came to Game Pass. Um, also a similarly interesting taste breaker, um, like a relaxing type game. It's called Moon Glow Bay. I don't know if you saw this one or not. Is that the fishing um, game? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, this was developed by Bunny Hug, which is a great name. That's a good, um, yeah, that's great. Pub- published by Coat Sync. Uh, it's, it's out on Xbox, um, all the Xboxes and Windows for now. I think it might be coming to other, some other stuff later, but it's basically like a. I'm not huge. I'm not super hot on the art style. Like it's voxel y graphics type things. I mean, it's charming, but. I don't know. Some of the stuff looks a little weird and it doesn't translate uh, super well, but it's charming enough um, to uh, to uh, do the job. But yeah, like Dave said, it's a it's a fishing. It's I guess it's I guess it's an RPG sort of because um, you are upgrading your equipment and your boats and your crafting stuff uh, like different types of bait and all this stuff. So basically the main objective of the game is you're just uh, you're starting up in this old fishing town trying to rebuild the town um restart the economy by uh fishing and selling your fish and uh like you can invest in different businesses there that are kind of broken down and stuff um but it's really it's really fun you're just discovering all these types of fish go out on your boat uh cast your net out there um it's just super relaxing i had a great time with that spent like maybe three hours with it um, and then there's this whole like cooking mini game mechanic. That's pretty cool. Um, so you have to, like for each, there's like a tons of different recipes that you can get based on the fish that you discover and you can get different recipes from different people talking to them in town. And like for each recipe, there's different steps you have to do, whether you like wash the fish, chop the fish up, 
get the potatoes out of the fridge, all that stuff. Like a little, it's not, uh, a little bit of cooking mama in there. Yeah, there's a little bit of that. <laughs> I mean, they're yeah, really simple mini that. games. Like you have to like time the chops or whatever, and then wash, you know, wash the ingredients and all that stuff. But uh, it's fun. Um, is it, is it like it, a Stardew where you're like going around town and talking to people and like story yeah, progresses would, a would, bit? Yeah, I would probably equate it to Stardew as the closest analog there. Because, yeah, you are talking to people around the town. You're getting more information. You're hearing like rumors about like uh, these different fish and where to find them. Um, and like certain fish are more rare than others and you can sell them for more. Um, you can also donate your fish to the, there's like an aquarium there and the more fish you donate that kind of raises, drives up the price for the, uh, economy. So you can sell your fish for more. Um, and I don't know, I've, I've been having a great time with it. I'll probably dip into a little more. Um, I haven't, haven't gotten super far, like I said, like three hours or so. How does the, the fishing mini game work? Um, it's kind of like Stardew. So you cast your line out there. It, uh, yeah, you just cast your line out. Um, and then you wait for the bower to go down. I think it's, i I think it's consistent every time. Like there's three like little tugs on the bobber and then it sinks down okay. and then you press the right trigger, um, to hook the fish. And then you kind of got to fight it with the analog stick, like the opposite way. And there's a couple other little things like you can press the left trigger to like give a hard tug, but if you like do the um, the hard tug too much, you'll tire yourself out and let the fish go. And, like your line can break if you're um, pulling too hard on it one way. So there's a little bit of uh, strategy in the right, mini cool. games, but there's enough there to uh, keep you busy. But I mean, it's not it's not hard by any means. Like I think some of the more rare fish are more difficult to catch, but um, so far it's been just been fun, relaxing. Um, something I'm in the mood for after Resident Evil for sure. Uh, but other than that, I've been, I, I put a decent chunk more into Metroid dread, um, about three hours more in there. I won't, I won't reiterate, uh, my thoughts on that. If you want, I think I talked about it at length on the lighthouse episode. Um, you did, which I gave yes. a little, yeah, still gave a little good new review on that one. So yeah, it's, it's great. It's just getting better and better. Um, and like it constantly feels like you're making progress, which I love. Like I never feel like I'm stuck at any point. I'm like always moving forward, getting the next item, getting into like a new area. Um, so that feels really good. I haven't really stalled out at all. Um, and I feel like with a Metroidvania, you you need that feeling of progress to kind of pull you through. So that's been sure. really really fun. Um, so I put a, a decent chunk into that. I'm about six hours in now. Um, and judging by other people's play times, it's about 10 hour game or so. So I still got a little bit of a, a chunk left there. So I'm excited to dig back into that. Um, the last thing I had was I actually dipped into some comics this week. Whoa. Like, oh, literally like 10 minutes before, not 10 minutes, but like an hour before the podcast. Um, so I, if Chris Logan, if you're listening, I took some of your recommendations. Um, one of the recommendations he had was a Batman comic run called Hush, which I had never heard of. I didn't know anything about it, which is kind of why I wanted to check it out. So I read the first issue of that and I mean, I'm really enjoying it. Like the art style is just fantastic. Um, it starts out like Batman is like investigating this chemical plant and he has to like rescue this little boy. Um, that's like the heir to this chemical plant fortune, which is interesting. And then like, like nine pages into the first issue, like killer croc shows up and like beats the shit out of Batman. Um, <laughs> and then Catwoman shows up and she like steals his briefcase full of money and Batman's chasing her and he falls and like breaks his shoulder. Like so much happened within the first issue. Um, it was pretty crazy. And then at the end of the issue, the last like cliffhangers poison Ivy shows up and she kind of seems like she's the main villain of this, uh, run. So, it was interesting. Um, I'm definitely going to keep reading, but I can see why people uh, get really into comics. <laughs> and once you get I'm gonna once you get going on a story, it's hard to more. it's hard to stop on those because uh, especially if you've yeah, got like definitely. the full if you got the full run and you're not waiting for the next issue to come out and you can just plow through like an entire series. It's super super yeah. cool. 
I mean, I read the first issue in like, I don't know, 10 minutes or something. Like it was super quick. And there's only 12 issues in this run. So, I mean, some of the later ones might be longer, but like it, it seems like it'd be super quick just to kind of run through them. So do you go hard fun. copy um, or digital? No, I, I just went digital um, for now. But okay. maybe if yeah, I maybe good. if I really get into it, I can start getting some of the hard copies. But there's something I'm just nice dipping about my toes in for now. Like something nice about having digital versions where you're not like worried about creasing things or I always get very careful when you're reading the, the physical versions that having them on the iPad is mm-hmm. real nice because you can just put it away, throw it on the couch and come back later and not have to worry about it. Yeah, pull it up, pull it up, read it and, you know, just pull it up in bed, read a couple couple issues before you go to bed or whatever. So, yeah, I could I could see myself getting into this, uh, some comics there, but I'm definitely going to finish that run at least. Um, so, but that was everything that I had for this week. Uh, how about you, Brandon? Uh, I'm like you guys. Resident Evil is just so creepy, and I needed the taste breaker. It, t- taste break, yeah, taste breaker. <laughs> um, it's like Game Pass knew. It's like Microsoft knew that we needed to kind of change genres, so they released all these cute little indie games. Uh, I went with out of all those games that came out, I checked out Backbone a little bit. Um, mm. Yeah, it was, it was cool. It's like a noir detective kind of game. It has like this eight bit. Uh, or more of like a 16-bit kind of look. Uh, old school, kind of like King's Quest or whatever. Yeah. Um, you're a detect, Yeah, you're a detective, and you're all these different animals. So it's like Zootopia, kind of noir kind of thing. Um, it's like a darker, <clears throat> dark, darker it's tones, very, right, though? It's very dark. It's very mature. They're swearing. Um, the subject matter is pretty intense. I didn't get too far. Um, I just kind of checked it out the other night and I was like, Ooh, this is cool. And it was late and I didn't, I knew I would fall asleep if I played too much. So I just kind of checked it out to see if I was into it. And what's crazy is I was just kind of rushing the conversations just to, to kind of see what the gameplay was like. And I think it's one of those games where there's just so many different branches and conversations that you really can make a unique experience each time. So mm-hmm. I don't know. That's, um, backbone. That was, I took a was, look at it. And yeah. it, it seemed like too much, uh, too much reading for me. Lots of uh, that's what I was going to ask. Is it lots not of voice, It's not voice acted, is it? It's not, and I wish it was because the artwork is gorgeous. Um, not very minimal music, so it's very easy to fall asleep to. So yeah, um, I don't know if it's for any for everybody, but I think just one of those games. It's small. It's you know, just kind of download it, check it out. If you like it, keep going. If you don't, whatever. No harm, no foul. Uh, but I think the artwork was really cool. Sometimes games like that will catch my eye, and I'll, I'll go for it. So I, I'm, I want to get back into that. And then I saw uh, Dave, on Sky. Oh, actually, no, Eric, you play Skyrim too. Um, do you remember Skyrim had all those mods? And there was one that was like award winning in the mod community, and it was mm-hmm. called the Forbidden City. Yeah. 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 So I see this game on uh, Game Pass, and I'm like, the Forbidden City. That looks familiar. Forgotten so, City. What am I saying? Forbidden. I'm um, saying so yeah, Forgotten City. The so, the Forgotten City, and it is. It's a full game version based off of the mod from Skyrim. Oh mm-hmm. no shit! And I thought that was interesting. Yeah, because I actually really enjoyed that mod, and uh, you can play it right now if you have Skyrim uh, Anniversary Edition or whatever. Go to the mods. Just look for it. It's free. Download it. I think it was free. Yeah, I think it was. It was a couple of bucks, but yeah, I think it was free. You download it; it's it's great, and it must have been done so well that they got permission somehow to redo it in its own game. So, the Forgotten City is on Game Pass. I thought that was really cool. Um, but yeah, they added like unpacking and Backbone and all these cute innocent games. And I even played a little bit of Artful Escape, um, that music kind of game where you shred guitar while you just constantly are zipping around and it's kind of like rock or garage band a little bit. Um, played that a little bit. Yeah. And that was it. I was not really looking to play anything dark or serious. Honestly, I needed a taste breaker, uh, video game <laughs> style. And that's it. Yeah. And then it kind of recapped on, uh, uh, Alice in Borderlands, and I watched a couple more episodes of the Squid Game. So yeah, I'm that's kind of where my head's at. But um, if that's it, then let's take a break, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about some social. Eric, did you ask anybody on to submit anything, Eric? 
Yeah, we got we got a few things. Okay, cool, great, awesome. Um, so yeah, let's go into those, and then we'll go into the story. But yeah, let's take a break first. have returned and we're going to be talking about Alice in Borderlands but before we do Eric I was asking you earlier you put this out there that we're going to be talking about this crazy show um what what did people say sure uh we only got a couple responses on Twitter here um so you can follow us at Twitter at Nomads of Fantasy uh, on Instagram at Nomads of Fantasy we also have a Facebook page uh facebook.com slash Nomads of Fantasy basically anywhere nomads of fantasy you can find us you'll find us google us um but on twitter we got a couple responses jake iveson as always he said he had this one has been on his list um and he says i guess i'll have to watch it before i listen to this episode so huh. jake if you're listening to this i hope you uh watched it before you listened and i hope you enjoyed it um we got one more response from the engineer girl and she says I will say it's like watching a video game. The characters are very likable, their relationships are relatable, and the story is intriguing. Which I can't, All true. I can't All disagree true facts, there. yeah. Yep, can't disagree. Um, but yeah, that was it. A short social section this week. Um, she gives us more time to get into it. Yeah, I didn't even think about putting it out there. Um, but Yeah, I yeah, wasn't let's... sure how many people had actually seen this one. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm I'm thinking that I'm thinking that whoever's listening to this right now is listening to this um probably down the road from us recording. We're recording this right after Halloween two thousand twenty one and Squid Game is just super popular right now. And that's kind of the point of this is because if you do get into that show, there's not that much content talking about this. I went on YouTube to see what people are saying and really I didn't see too much, especially for uh, English um, speakers. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, so we're going to get into it. So, okay, uh, this is a different one. Other than us doing some anime uh, movies or um, shows in the past on, on this, this show, uh, this is a little bit different, right? Um, we've done Loki, mm-hmm. and we've done Invincible. And what other TV shows? A couple series uh, we've done. Visions. Visions in My Hero Academia. My Hero, one. yep. So here we are looking at Alice in Borderlands, which came out uh, early 2020, right? Yep. And ha, right around when COVID was going down and this show comes out, which is just kind of weird. And then, yeah, it was a Netflix show. And apparently it's based off of a, a manga. From I didn't know that up until doing the research for this episode. Um But is there anything that you guys wanted to kind of put out there before we get into the plot and talk about the characters? I mean, I hadn't heard of this at all before you brought it up, Brandon. Like, I was completely in the dark. Um, Same here. I went into this completely blind, not knowing a single damn thing, other than, like, it was kind of like Squid Game. Which, I mean, I haven't watched Squid Game yet, but I know the general premise, so... Okay. Um, I was definitely going in blind for this one. Do you know who told me about this show? Our friend Victoria. Oh, really? We used to work. Yeah. Hmm. Shout um, out. Yeah. So we all used to work together, everybody here. And yeah, Victoria, we used to work with her. And she's the one that said, hey, you might I, like this show. This is a Victoria like, show for sure. Yeah, dude. So I, I told her, like, this is great. Um, but yeah, so thank you, Victoria. If you do listen to this episode, thank you. Um, but yeah, uh, what about you, Dave? What, what are your... Uh, I, I mean, say what if you, say what you will about the show. I mean, we'll get into the spoilers and all that stuff after this. I I know nothing about it either. I kind of just went in blind. Um, did not know it was a manga until after I was done watching it, and which makes a lot more sense with some of the mm-hmm. things that are going on and some of the weird tropes that are kind of used, and I don't know some of the things that happen. I guess like when somebody's shoot, aiming a gun at you, all you have to do. Is duck and run full sprint at them with your arms up behind you. <laughs> they did that like over and over. Every time somebody had a gun aimed at them, they just ran at them. 
Well, what would you do in that situation? Apparently, I'm going to do that. (laughs) Uh, Okay, yeah. So, I I too, I I have not watched a show from Japan. Um, Really, I'm trying to think. Had I? Maybe at some point, sometime in college, I might have watched something. But it's usually movie format, but not a TV show. And or an anime, obviously, is a TV show, which is animated, but uh, live action from Japan. And I don't mind subtitles, honestly. It's the way to go. It's hard to multitask. Mm -hmm. You can't like do anything else. Like I had to, I've watched this before and I had you guys watch this, but I wanted to refresh. So I I had to like skim through a lot of these episodes Mm -hmm. and I'm trying to like do dishes or cook or something like, well, usually when I watch something or whatever, but. I couldn't do it. I had to like constantly yeah. like look at the subtitles, and I did subtitles because the dubs. The first time the, I did it, oh I my did God. like I can't. first few episodes. There, yes. Pro tip: before we get in spoilers, watch Alice in Borderlands uh, with subtitles. Do not. Do there's the something. There's something about a live action dub that I can't do. Like with anime, I'm completely fine with dubs. Like I'll I'll watch dubs all day with anime. Um, Makes sense. But like when when it's live action and their mouths don't match up with the character's voice, and like these are Japanese native Japanese people actors, and right. you have like an English voice actor voicing over their lines it, like, i'm it's with you just it's so me, it's the, weird it's when they laugh and like they're ha 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 and it does not laugh <laughs> does not match do up it. with any the emotional stuff like, anger any of that stuff never comes it doesn't through, yeah uh, in the dub yeah yeah and the original really bad. These original are really bad audio is way to, the way to go for this one for sure i turned the dub on for about five seconds and i'm like nope definitely turning that off yeah, I checked. I turned them on towards the end to see what the other characters would sound like because I was like, "Man, they're really bad." Let's see what these guys and they're so bad. It is so much better if you just go in with uh, doing subs, so mm-hmm. subtitles. It is. I don't mind so, subtitles in general. I mean, even like English shows, I watch with <laughs> subtitles now because I feel like it Saves. makes me pay more attention and mm-hmm. I don't miss as many things. Like sometimes character characters will mumble, and I'm like. What the hell did they just say? And, and we have kids, and they it. just yeah, constantly exactly. making sounds. So it, it's just like I can't follow the plot anymore. I got tur- and I want to turn it up. So <laughs> just turn on subtitles. I'm with you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. So Eric, do you want to go into um, the plot actually of the show, sure. and then you can go spoilers, man. I mean, let's just kind of hit I feel like, some of the key things here. Yeah, I feel like. I don't the the best way to talk about this show is to talk about some of the major scenes, but I'll do like a super quick plot summary just because I feel like the premise isn't. I mean, it's not overly complicated, other than you know it gets it gets complicated later. But the what's well, mysterious main plot? Like we don't yeah. know what's going on. That's kind of one right. of the things. That's the mystery surrounding it. That's uh, intriguing. Um, so basically, when it starts up, it focuses on these uh, three friends. Um, and just just to be clear, we're all gonna butcher these Japanese names like a thousand times, so please just bear with us. Um, so you have the in the main three friend group when we first kind of meet them, um, we have Arisu, which is kind of the main character, Choto and Karabe. Choto. Karube. <laughs> Karube. Okay. See, yeah, I'm already butchering it. Choto. Um, so we have these these three guys. Uh, you could tell they're they're super good friends. Um, uh, and then they're just hanging out one day and all of a sudden, like they come out, <laughs> they're in this bathroom, like messing around, which is kind of weird. Well, it's uh, weird. Can we, hold on, can we, hold on. I don't want to get, I know, I know. I, I always do this. <laughs> Tell us the plot. But then like, I think of scenes and like, dude, I, I, I think they did a great job selling these three guys as friends. Like they yeah. truly feel like they're, they they're are like, probably friends in real life. They have like a they hobbit, really good. hobbit like relationship but, because they like love each other and they touch each other mm-hmm. and they giggle with each other, each other and they are just like, they are literally yeah, like the Karube. hobbits frolicking on the bed with Frodo. They're like mm-hmm. so happy yeah, to Karube be with each picks other. picks up a Risu. He picks him up. Have you ever just picked up a buddy and just ran into the street and you just spin in circles and they just put their arms up and they're just... <laughs> it's wild. There's, there's some cheese. And there's some real cheese in the beginning. Of there's this. some cheese. And the opening song is it's, pretty lame. It's, it's a good cheesy. Beat, but it's, they reused but it's, that song a couple times too. And it's every time yeah. it came up, I was like... And I'm sure it's probably a popular Japanese boy band or something like that. But 
<laughs> it was just a little too like when they get to the beach and everybody's partying and they're playing this it's like Japanese cheesy dance song. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Like their 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 relationship no, is you. cheesy, but like like you said, but Brian, I loved it's it. genuine. Like you can you know they sell it really well. Like they are best friends. Like they've known each other for yeah, I, it's a really like long time, guys. But Which, then that's like they cause like a car accident, so they like run to get away from the cops. They they like, hey who, who caused mm -hmm. this, and they run into like a restaurant and hide in a restroom stall, a bathroom stall, yeah. But right before that happened, though, um. Was it Choda looks up and he sees uh, like fireworks behind a building, yep. mm -hmm. and then you hear like the sound of ex like metal, like a ship, like the metal on the interior of a sh old, like a massive old ship, like like almost like a, you hear like this. That's what it sounds like, uh, and then you don't know because of the um, the car accident that they caused, but there's just like chaos. It's like Times Square. It's like downtown Tokyo, and they book it into that restaurant and then hid in the 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 restroom and yeah that's i'm sorry but i just kind of want to hit that detail because that's kind of like the turning point where it goes from like normal mm -hmm. to kind of like a the rapture or something weird well this is i mean this is all within the first 15 minutes of the first episode yes like like you meet these characters they're palling around they're hanging out and then whatever it hits the 15 minute mark and then the power goes out while they're in the stall. They come out of the stall, and Tokyo is completely abandoned, empty. Like there's no one else around, as far you know, as far as they can see. For now, they think they're kind of the the last three people in the entire city, um, and that's like that's when the show actually starts. The title card hits, and uh, you know you're in for a a, a good time. Um, but just just a general plot overview. I, f I feel like we should just do a you know, a general right, one before it. we get into the scenes. Drop it. So, I mean, basically, they, they're all trapped in an abandoned city. They realize quickly that there's other people as well, um, but obviously not the entire population of Tokyo. That's a, that's a mystery throughout this whole show of, like, what happened to everybody else in the city. Like, we don't know. We don't, we don't even find out in this season, um, which is interesting. Uh, so... They are basically forced to compete in these different types of games, which each have a different type and a different difficulty. Um, and after they survive their first game, they receive what they call visas, um, which basically allows them to live in this uh, world. You know, so if say they complete a game, they get three days added to their visas. So that allows them to live three more days before they have to compete in another game to gain more time. And basically, once their visa expires, <laughs> they're executed by these giant fucking lasers that shoot down from the sky and shoot you right through the head. It's um, like the Truman Show. I couldn't stop thinking about yeah. this, this giant dome <laughs> yeah. that they don't see. And like, there's just there's like a laser up there and mm -hmm. it just knows where everybody is. And then if you disobey or break the rules or it's your time, it's just... This right through the you're like right in the middle of your forehead yep yeah dude it's insane but i yeah i couldn't think about i just kept thinking about Truman show <laughs> for some weird yeah. reason yep yeah so that i mean that's the basic overview i kept thinking about have you guys ever seen um the movie cube or like there's multiple i never have series. only scenes no. from like just youtube or whatever but i've heard it, good things about it's it. it's very similar sort of in a way to this cube i feel like cube is more akin to like saw so it's like these people that are taken against their will, put into this like puzzle box that they have to figure out and um, basically all these dangerous traps and everything. Uh, and if they can escape, then they basically win, win the game. So there's definitely this. This is obviously not the first show that has done this kind of idea um, going back to like Battle Royale and whatever Saw Cube. Like there's so many things that have done this before, but um, it is an interesting twist uh that the show is more it definitely it did feel like like very video gamey um like with the the style of puzzles and games that they had to compete it in it opens up with um Arisu basically playing video games mm -hmm. very like that's a superpower aggressively yeah exactly S superpowers being a puzzle a puzzle man video game guy which is kind of weird he was but... playing like Call of Duty or not Call of Duty but like he was playing a shooter or some, something violent uh, but mm. but yeah, which is kind of cool. They, I think they do a good job with character development, which is interesting because 
when they're thrown into these games, you spend a lot of time. You spend a lot of time with the three guys that you're introduced in the first episode. Um, you spend a lot of time with them, and you learn about their background, their their, um, you know, like what their life is like before all this happened, and uh, their personality type and their emotion state and how they handle certain things under stress like the acting is actually pretty good i was expecting less i was like this is all gonna be about like you said like with saw a little bit where it's just more of how are these bland characters um who might be desperate or lost or whatever but like how are they gonna die and this one i really don't want them to die uh there's Mm -hmm. girls like in the first game there's two girls that are introduced right away and I, I had no re- relationship with them, so I didn't care if they died. But I really cared about like these three guys surviving the first game, uh, at least for me. Did, wh- why? What's going on there, Dave? Well, I'm. Who I was just saying, like, like uh, they do <laughs> some. They do some die. character. <laughs> they do some character. <laughs> you kind of know that, like, they're gonna get murdered at some point or another. I guess spoiler alert. I don't know. Uh, they get murdered at some point. I guess. But, but like Chota, like learning about what his mom and he works just to pay for her like cult and he struggles with like his faith. Um, and then I think they did a really good job of like it's not just these three main characters. They kind of do it with all of the main characters that you see is give them like a kind of a flashback yeah. backstory before, you know, the before times before this whole game started gives you kind of it allows you to sympathize with the characters a little bit. Even some of the the villains like. You can see why some of their motives behind their actions when they get transported into this game. Um, I mean, some of them are kind of like too quick and uh, unearned, but I think they do a good it's job. It's consistent. With most of them. Some are and a I little th- abrupt. Like I was wondering, like yeah. some episodes yeah. would start with somebody, and I'm like, who the hell is this guy? And it ends up being like last boss with his ninja sword and tattoos all over his face. Like you mm-hmm. get to see like where he came from, but like. I I don't know. At some points, I was like, "Do we really have to learn about this one guy who is going to be here for a little bit?" And then I'm assuming he'll be back next season. But uh, the best the best part of the whole thing is the games. Like the games are like yes, the most for tense, sure. and they do feel very saw like because they're very technically set up. And the thing about them is like they'll start, and you'll think you'll know what's going on, but Obviously, things are never quite what they seem, especially with the Hearts games. Um, I guess we should say that, like, each... Everything's based off of, like, a deck of cards. And the higher the number of the card goes, the more difficult the game is. And then the suit of the card depends on what type of game it is. So it could be a team game, a strength game. Hearts games are pretty brutal. And I don't know what diamonds are. Yes. Spade, but... spade is heart... Or spade is strength. Clubs is teamwork and diamonds is wits and then hearts is like playing with each other's emotions and feelings which that's okay. when the horrible shit usually happens so mm-hmm. i guess I, if we're gonna I, no go ahead well I, well i just want to kind of say one thing i think the pacing is really bad in this um <laughs> it goes up and I think it, up and down it, up and down i agree because yeah. when you said that like you didn't care about like well not that you didn't care about like your favorite parts were the um were the games. And I will give you that some of the best, the draw of the show and like the best moments, the highest tension is the games, especially in the first half. Mm -hmm. And then first three episodes were the best. Yeah. Uh, I'll just say that. And then the second half turns into a totally different concept when the games take Mm -hmm. a backseat. It's like, um, it's kind of like, uh, walking dead where the first yes, season or the first half or the first season or whatever is really good because it's all about <laughs> what the hell's going on and it's trying to survive um, the zombie attack and just kind of using your wits to get out of it. And like, what would you do, right? But then it slowly turned into a drama. And I would say this show has the same kind of – it's not It's not like it's bad. It's just that you kind of sign up for the games and the games take a backseat and you introduce you to the beach – and at first, it's weird. Like I don't think the middle does much to kind of, yeah, yeah. You know, I don't know. It's like it's not as interesting. I just didn't care as much because there's just too, so many characters out of nowhere, and I still am like sad because I just lost like two really good ones that mm-hmm. I really like those dudes. And you know, it was hard for me to just go into a new 
state of mind. Now that said, I ended up really liking the last two episodes when shit went mm-hmm. down with the witch. And I actually enjoyed the last two episodes. The two episodes before that were a little bit rough. Like the whole Hatter story. Um, but yeah, so like in the story, like we go from the, following those three guys. And then, you know, we... Yeah, they're like surviving these games, and then something crazy happens. Well, exactly. We can exactly get... what you said, Brandon. Um, the games, like the games, are so dangerous. Like within the first three episodes, like this is all that you know. These three uh, guys and this other girl are focused on. Like it's just getting through these games, surviving, and that's all it's about. And then, like once they discover the beach and are kind of indoctrinated into that whole society. Like the games lose their like danger, essentially. Like they they're not the danger shifts to the exact beach. yeah. It shifts to guys like Hatter, a Goonie. The like games number two the games guy, become the a tool to get the cards so that they can you know escape essentially or try you know that's their whole philosophy behind the beach is to collect mm-hmm. all of the cards um, mm-hmm. that are given out after you win each game and essentially they think that if you collect all the cards then uh, someone, you know, whoever collects all the cards will be able to return to like the original world, which that's, I mean, there's no basis. Like he even said it. Yeah. He said it like the Hatter just made that up yeah, at some point tr- just to like, it's not true. There's, you know, there's no, uh, backup to whether that's true or not. So they're just kind of blindly following Hatter. And I mean, it's basically a cult. Essentially the beach is just a cult and they're all following their, their leader, um, blindly. So. Uh, so can we go, can we go back? Yeah, definitely. If you're good. So episode one, you know, they go to the place, they do that first, they do the first game where you got to pick doors where it's kind of like a 50, 50 thing. And Arasu figures out like the dimensions of the building. And he does like this rain man thing where he's like, well, the BMW yeah. is this many meters long and the building is this many meters wide. And then I'm like, well, this is just kind of silly, but he figures out the game and he figures out. It's it's built in a building and the rooms are only so big, so you can so they have to be positioned in a certain way mm-hmm. so they mm-hmm. make their way out. Uh, Chota gets his leg burned, which was kind of silly because that didn't look like he got burned that bad. I don't know. <laughs> but then in the second episode, Arasu and Karube go out to like learn more about the games and they do this apartment building game called Tag, yep. where there's. Somebody walking around oh, with a yeah. horse head I and love, machine gun. They, I, I love, love the this sequence. Was awesome. the sh- they was shot it was, really well. Was like, yeah. I love when they did like the drone shot or crane shot on the outside. And you would just have people running on multiple levels. And yeah, I you could see it. them all well running done. across. It, yep. That's episode that was two. Right? Su- that was super yeah. good. That's episode two. Yeah. Yeah. The And I mean, that was a, I mean, and you're talking about pacing before. One of the worst parts of that episode is that uh, the girl that they're with, uh what was her name shibuki um she's like seducing chota and like using her female lures <laughs> to uh try and get him onto her side basically more or less she's just trying to survive she'll do whatever it takes whether it's we learned that fucking the nerdy we, guy or what so. yeah, yeah we learned that from the last game because she was willing to let the other girl go she's just doing whatever she can to survive essentially she doesn't really care about anyone else but they they keep cutting between like Chota's backstory of his weird religious mom and then this super intense tag game. And then they cut back to like this weird, like seduction scene. And then they go back mm-hmm. to the thing. And it was just weird where it was like, that was the pacing was, it's weird. It's all over the place. Yeah. I'm totally with you on that. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's, if it's good or bad for me, it was a little frustrating. Um, yeah. I don't mind learning like his like Chota's past and yeah I get the I get why I think they do a really good job pairing characters up with their different backgrounds because I'm sure there's something to her background because she was cheating on her husband she has the ring and then Chota having you know he's like a virgin and he never really gets to live the life he wants to well in her previous life she was just trying she basically banged her boss to uh move up in her world you know as to uh, yep. become an executive so it like you said that informs her personality in the game like she's doing whatever Selfish. it takes to yep. get to the top yes yeah and i don't mind that but uh, it's the pacing it's not like 
bad. Like there are some really good moments of tension. Like the second game, you have no idea what tag is gonna be, mm-hmm. and it takes forever for like the guy to show up with like the guns. You're like, oh shit, you know. Uh, the only thing that yeah, I didn't escalates quick. I didn't like the double jump. Everybody, like the two of us, are gonna jump across and hit the buttons at the same time. Yeah. That well, it's always, game, but always, always, oh, always, always. I think like, it's from the manga. Any any game that has a time limit, it has to come down to the last, literally the last second. Like, yeah, of course, tension. I mean, sure, it's fine, but like, come on, come on now. But it's cool. They with the mystery though, like the woman, like she, they take her mask off and she's just like a normal looking woman mm-hmm. who, for some reason, was able to hold off a couple people for a little bit there. But um, and then she's got that ring around her neck, so she's playing too, and. It goes off and you're like, what the fuck? You know, I do like that. I did like that aspect where there's two different sides to the game. Um, So basically, uh, whatever, the taggers in the horse heads were also playing the game. They had to prevent them from stopping the bomb. And if they did that, they would win. Everyone else would die. But the opposite happened. And the, you know, the people that weren't the taggers ended up winning. And then the taggers lost and died at the end. So. That was an interesting. I'm twist. assuming they had, they had something going on because they had like super strength or something during that episode where like she was like Horsehead was fucking up some people pretty bad. Like took some <laughs> shots to the face from the. Well, there was two. The big dude and the wife beater that we meet later. Yeah, there was two different horse uh, taggers. Agunai. That's where you meet. Is it Agunai? And then you meet white haired uh, Chishia. Yeah. Chishia. His name, yeah. I think that's how you pronounce that. Uh, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna. Yeah. Don't, don't yell at me. Internet. <laughs> Hey, real quick, uh, how do do we like this character? That, that character, he's I think a he's smug bastard. Cheesy, but it... he is. He's got this smirk on his face. Where you don't want to slap him like every single time you well, see he his just... face. But I also kind of like him because he's just like he's always waiting in the shadows, watching people, and then taking advantage when he can. Right? Because yeah, he just dude. He... Dude was about to. He was about to lose that the tag game until uh, the girl uh, Usagi shows up. And helps out Arisu. Mm-hmm. So he, they hit the buttons right. or whatever, and he's just kind of waiting in the wing. He's waiting in the hallway, trying not to get shot, and he's just trying he's not. to Very get opportunistic ball, is... and observant. Like he just, like you said, yeah, he waits and yeah, watches yeah. and waits for the solution for someone else to find the solution. And then he takes advantage of the situation. So, I mean, that was. I mean, that's and that's only two episodes in. The third episode is where shit kind of escalates third episode, and i think this is yeah, the, my favorite it's like the turning point of the whole the whole thing because chota gets so the red chota gets burnt and then yeah i was say the red wedding yeah right <laughs> yeah <laughs> shibuki shibuki and chota's uh visas are expiring so all four of them go to a game and it's a four of hearts mm-hmm. and it's a was it big bad wolf is the, yeah. the game which how is this a Basically, how whoever is this you, a fucking four? Whoever you look at this has got to be like a fucking seven eight difficulty well i was thinking about it though because like they just like there's all those weapons and things on the table they're like pliers and stuff like Mm -hmm. that and the rule of the game is like it doesn't say anything about the headsets it doesn't take say anything about it it just says whoever you look at becomes the big bad wolf so if everybody's gonna die anyways why didn't they Mm -hmm. take an axe and try chopping off one of the headsets because you're gonna die anyways you might as well just See if that works. Well, they they said breaking, messing with, or breaking the collar will set it off, and your head's going to explode or well, whatever. Right? Did they say Arisu, that? So they knew he just the, yes. Arisu because, just saw no, it because before. Cho just freaks it out. He freaks out and he starts like taking it off, and they said leave it alone. Don't well, Arisu it, was just guessing that it he didn't know for sure because oh, he sure. saw it blow up. The yeah, the previous one he saw horsehead ladies blow up. So. They're, yeah, they're nerve anything. They don't want to do it. I mean, there's a laser literally aimed at your head at all at any given time too. When you break the rules or go out of the boundaries or whatever. Sure, but I I think that one could have ended differently if they had tried something differently. But I think I guess it's weird because they like there's the hunting where like they they immediately all turn on each other mm-hmm. and try like the girl yeah, the chick dude. tries to become the wolf and go hide. Yep. Yep. And then at a certain point. Everybody's hiding from uh, Erisu, and they don't want to become the wolf, and they're basically like giving the game mm-hmm. to him. And <laughs> I didn't think it was. I was waiting for something to happen, well, but listen, I thought I was confused because I thought um, I thought they were going to do a switcheroo here, 
where the wolf is the one that dies and all the sheep were the ones that live because they made a point to show like the rules twice like oh the big the wolf is the one who is going to survive but you know you have to hide from the wolf like I don't know. I didn't understand that. I was a little bit confused there as to what was going to happen at the end, but I guess they did that on purpose. So you didn't know exactly what was going to happen, but I don't know that it definitely got me though. Um, I think there had to be another solution, but yeah, I guess long story short, short uh, Chota and Karube both get their heads popped off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, actually, so everybody she, she except for Arasu yep. yeah. gets their heads popped off. Which yeah, is it's just the four of them at pretty that brutal. Point. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, Karu, Karube was awesome. The guy with the blonde hair, that was like my favorite character because he, he knew how to punch and he could take a punch. I just thought it was cool. I'm like, damn, they killed that guy off. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So you saw him like go like face to face with the horse guy in the tag mm-hmm. episode. I know. And, like, you could see that he's like, he's like the the meat and potatoes of the the friendship group. And, but well, he was always like, you know, Arisu is the smart one. Yeah, he was always stopping the moment and saying like, Arisu, you could be better than this. Like he says that yeah. even in the beginning of the thing, he's always like giving these pointers, like, dude, you're always better than us, though. It's like you should live for us because you're better. So like, I just liked his character because he was kind of like the the muscle of the group, or kind of like the mm-hmm. you know whatever the tough guy, and he had like the best brains actually at sometimes. He had like some good sense. Um, I think yeah, it was they, they uh, wise. <laughs> I think it was pretty effective, like emotionally for me, anyways, because they kept doing like during that episode while they were playing the game, they kept doing the flashbacks of like showing the good guys use of the flashbacks. All, yeah, they showing the guys all together having fun, like they're such good <laughs> friends, and like you could tell that those two guys were the only thing that Arisu had because his family life, you know, was kind of shitty, where his dad just treated him like garbage, and you know. He didn't. He uh, cared about he his was a, more than he was him. a jobless video game guy that just did nothing but fucking sit around and yeah, skip, but skip school and play video still games. Treated him constantly. like trash. Well, maybe he deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'm not gonna defend Arisu. I mean, I think yeah, he's a little bit lazy. Uh, but anyways, it was sad, and I do like that the show, like Arisu as a character, still thinks of them. And they, you get like flashbacks of mm-hmm. them in the later episodes. Well, that... so the character is really good. I just I don't know. They they took they took care of their characters. They definitely just just like oh okay those guys are dead though, so we could make it emotional in episode three. But like Arisu was like his acting when they die, it's like five mm-hmm. minutes of him screaming his head I off, and I was like man, I felt really bad. Yeah, it was, absolutely. It was sad, but it 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 gave him well. I mean, at first, like in the next episode, we see him just laying on the street, like lost all will to live. But um, then he meets Usagi, which is the other girl. Um, she's a survivor. She, yep, clearly, she's a survivor. she knows how to mountain climb, snap rabbits' necks, and eat them, make a nice stew, set up a tent. <laughs> yep. And she kind of picks him up off his feet and basically tells him to like, "Let's go." Like you, there's a reason that these guys died so that you could live. So that's basically Arisu's new purpose is to live like survive for his friends which um i guess gives uh their deaths a little bit more meaning which i liked yeah sure yeah uh, they they at one point here like uh i think it was when they were playing tag they they find a walkie talkie and they hear somebody talking about like going back to the beach or whatever and this is kind of where mm-hmm. arasu kind of picks up where Chota left off and he's like, all right, well now my next job is to find the fucking beach. And this is one of the things where I have like a dumb yeah. issue with, because it is makes yeah. fucking no dumb sense because literally the beach, they're having these giant rave parties. They are the only people with electricity who you can see from like fucking halfway. You can see it completely across the city. You can see this, this right. place like lit up like a beacon. You can hear the rave music pump in. There's people just getting hammered. They're sending out people to the games in like f- fucking muscle cars or stuff like that. Like, and in the beginning Wait, of the we movie, skipped over something. Oh, sure. We skipped, we skipped over some stuff in episode four. Episode four is kind of the big one after the whole game where Arsu's friends died. Usagi finds him, picks him up, where they're searching for the beach. Yeah. And then they compete. Oh, in this the is bus the one game, where they got the distance. Yeah, game. they got to oh, run the bus. Game. I don't, I don't want to skip this over was... that. 
Yeah, uh, no, that's, that's a, a good, good call. One. That's right. Which is interesting because this whole episode is self-contained, more or less. And um, man, like it's a, uh, it's a doozy. I have because... mixed feelings on this. Okay. One. Um, okay. So like, I liked the premise. Um, like, I thought it was, I thought it was a little cheesy. Like, oh, the bus was the goal the whole time, and all it that. It said stuff. it right on the bus. <laughs> right. Like bad CGI aside, like there's a lot of bad CGI in this show. The, um, the Panthers like the, were pretty bad. The Panthers, the animals, all that stuff. Whatever. The, the tigers, the, the water. Panthers. Yeah, sure. Whatever. That's it. Is what it is. The budget shows the budget of the show a little bit, but um, yeah, the whole thing where like they run this distance, so they're running for an hour, right? Um, and you have to assume that I don't know. They're running at an average pace of like five or six miles per hour. So they run like five or six miles within that hour. And then Arusu finds this motorcycle with diesel in it. (laughs) And he's like... He just happens to know that too. He's like, oh, yeah, this model of motorcycle uses a diesel engine. Oh, the bus also uses a diesel engine. So they meet these three guys, you know, before that are kind of... He kind of relates with because they're kind of like him and his friends. So he wants to go back and save this guy whose leg was also injured, just like Choto's was. So he kind mm-hmm. of sympathized him with, with him a little bit. Right, because they're like, all right, the distance is zero and it's it's a timer. So we're assuming that we have to go farther because we're at zero. So whatever the number yep. is, we don't know what we'll find out. And they go and you hit a dead end and it's like, oh shit, you never were supposed to leave. They fucked with you. Mm-hmm. Zero is what you want to be. Only- I had to, whatever, suspend disbelief a little bit because, like, Arusu ran, what, five, six miles back hauling that heavy-ass With motorcycle, a motorcycle. And he got there in time to fill up the gas tank of the bus and drive all the way <laughs> over there. I was wondering how he siphoned the gas. Like, I'm like, what did you, how did you get the gas tank out of there and into yeah. the bus? Like, yeah. It's so there's a bit of gotta, a suspension of disbelief. Yeah, you got to forget about some shit. I think, like, I think this should have been, I think this should have been two seasons the with the for the stuff that they throw in this first season i think there's too much i think dude it, i wish i wish the whole first season was them trying to survive in the games like the first three episodes i wish yeah. that was the whole first and season just, i wish they extended yeah, that and then the last or the second last episode maybe you that's when you kill off those the the, the two buddies you know that would have made a perfect like yeah second to last episode and then it just ends with him screaming right um i don't know why they put so much in the first season i think because now you would have started off with the running, right? And he'd been, yeah, and like the second season could have been him, yeah, with the whole running and thinking mm-hmm. about the guys and um, meeting these other guys and wanting to go back and the, that him getting the gas could have been explained better because they have more more time. Yeah, like you said, the so, pacing like is said, rushed. The pacing a bit. is a bit. Yeah. It's it's a bit bad. It's it's a bit it's a bit rough. Um, it's not bad where you you won't be able to stay in the show. You're like that's it. I can't take it. It's just you gotta think, let things go. I keep thinking about that uh, that Walking Dead comparison that you made earlier. I think that's a perfect analogy because, like, the first three seasons of The Walking Dead, like the zombies are the most dangerous thing, and then it becomes whatever all about politics. But they took three seasons to get up to that point. With this show, it only took three episodes, so I yeah. think that's kind of the difference there, and it, it felt rushed. Right? Yeah, like when, yeah, man. You know, and I there's some things I like. I like that after in three episodes, I learned real quick. Okay, anybody can die in this show. I'm, I'm guessing a is the main character, but who knows, right? Like they just kill off those guys, mm-hmm. and they and everybody gets a backstory. So they do like just know that you're gonna get more into understanding these characters than you think you are. It's not just a show about just so like when you watch um Squid Game. I don't really know much about the other characters that I've met. I'm just kind of meeting them with the main character, and that's it. I'm not getting much of flashbacks, only on a couple people, but not really everybody. It's more of in that second episode of that season, they they kind of let everybody out of these games, and they kind of go back in the real world, and they like they just they they have a shitty life, and they mm-hmm. choose to go back to these games willingly. That's a big differentiator from this, where this show. Alice in Borderland is, is all about these people are like, what the fuck is going on? I got to play these games or I die. And we're trying to unsolve this mystery together with the characters. So, but I always likened it to like Hunger Games and Lost because mm-hmm. like Lost always had that like Lost had that like weird mystery to it. But and then like 
also like once you start to find out what the mystery yeah. is, it's kind of a lot down. <laughs> yeah, I think this is gonna. Mm. This could be like that where it's uh, it's know. all a video game because because like in the second episode, uh, Shibuki, she's talking about there's a rumor at her company that some guy in Europe made mm-hmm. a VR that is so realistic you forget you're in the real thing. She mm-hmm. said maybe this is what's going because they were trying to. I like that they were all sitting around trying to figure out what the hell's going on, what works, why does this work, why doesn't this work. Let's get into the beach. The second half. Second half. Yeah, let's get to the beach. So they can't. They this place they can't find, but there's just loud techno music pumping out of it, and and right muscle cars tearing away from it all the, all the time. But yeah, they end up exactly. they end up realizing that the dudes with the wrist things are the ones that they want to follow, yes. and then they start spying on some mm. people going into games and uh the what's, what's the girl's name. She was doing the she was doing the Terminator run Usagi. She's doing the Terminator run like T one thousanding right behind the car, like as it's driving down the street, and they end up finding the beach, which is mm-hmm. really just a, a resort basically that's been taken over by the Hatter and his buddy, the military guy, uh, Ugani. 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 Aguni, 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 yeah. Aguni, Aguni, sure. And there's a lot of politics going on there. So that's when, the, like, the whole politics, like, yeah, after this is like the sh- season kind of shifts, like, this is like we're saying there, where it's all politics, where you have the militants and then you have the Hatter and, like, the rest of the people because he's, like, the mm-hmm. the charismatic leader of this. He just uh, wants to create a utopia, you know, for all these whatever survivors and try to says it yeah. get out find a way out of the game but he reminds me of like a far cry villain Ooh, but yeah <laughs> Dave. but yes. like uh right yes but like yeah you see like in some flashbacks later like he wants it to be a utopia but eventually like he starts he starts losing his shit when you uh mm-hmm. he basically tells erisu and Usagi that they're gonna they're trying to collect all the cards um and if you don't cooperate they just murder you basically so yep everybody's there and you have to give them your cards and try and get more cards or else you just get murdered death to mm-hmm. all traders yep he gives the the three rules which he had a he had a really nice wall of cards that they're like keeping track of things mm-hmm. on I'm like wow that was right that was pretty handy that you just had that line. Well, not lying around, but somebody painted that for you, which was kind of cool. But they have all of them except for like two, two or three cards that they're looking for. All of the beach stuff kind of blurs together for me. Like it's all like I, I can't really tell, you know, remember which episode is which. Um, it just kind of all happens it's at tough once. It's tough because like a lot of characters are in that room when you meet. You don't just meet the Hatter. Mm-hmm. There's like a fucking like ten new characters. Well, you got the around. whole executive like uh, whatever they call yeah. it, the executives of the beach, who are like and the, the militants. important members and the militants. Yep, because there's number one like, who's the Hatter, and then there's like two, some other guy, but his name's number two, and then there's you know all that stuff. So everybody has a number that's like in line. Um, but you have dudes who there's two guys who have weapons and then, uh, the rest of them are all like kind of executives of some capacity. We don't really get into how they get into this power, right? Do we learn this? Also, my question is how long has this been going on? From my perspective, this has only been going on like, I don't know, a week or like, were there people in this? Yes. So, I mean, I got the impression that. that this existed before the... Uh, they talk about that in the second episode. actually got into the game. Second episode, they they talk about how time works. They're all sitting around eating, and they were saying how to them it was like three days. But for somebody that came from like another city, Shibuki, yeah, she, she had like weeks or something like that. So time, they talk about that time is different. My guess is this is an alternate uh, dimension or some type of shit going on, like some supernatural shit, like so time. aliens or VR. That's where Either aliens are. or VR, yeah. Yep, I agree. Um, we just say that out of the militants, um, the way that uh, there's a guy, there's two of the like the underlings of the militants. There's like the main guy with the wife beater that we met in the tag game, uh, <laughs> Aguni. Yep, Aguni. Who's clearly military Aguni. trained because he can like say he's dominant with his right hand. He's using this weapon. He knows stuff like your average mm-hmm. civilian wouldn't know. Yeah. 
he's not i don't know as a as a big bad he wasn't very scary because he doesn't really talk or he doesn't like show show any force or whatever so i didn't think he was very scary as a villain or whatever also he he tried to help them out in the tag game as well like they were like working together which i mean i guess we find out later that the whole object of the beach is to like their main goal is just to win the game so they'll do you know if they have to work together with other people to win the game then they'll do it and if they have to sacrifice people to win the game they'll do that in tag (laughs) Mm -hmm. exactly oh yeah yeah uh two of the other militant guys was naragi the guy with he's always carrying around a ak or something and he's mm-hmm. got like he's always holding it wrong. He's always holding it over his shoulder. It's like a dude has never held a gun before in his he's, entire life. Uh, he looks like he's out of a Final Fantasy game to me. The way he like holds <laughs> he himself just, and behaves well, he is just uh, so annoying. I mean, we get a little bit of his backstory too, where he's like, "Oh, he was this bullied kid." Um, which th- his backstory, I feel like it was a kind of throwaway thing. Like we were supposed to kind of yeah feel bad for him. Like, oh, he was bullied as a kid. Blah blah blah, and then once he got into this game, he became empowered and felt like this badass, and he just started. Uh, yeah, becoming... he needed another back, like back uh, ground scene to for us if he has some sympathy. Yeah, like I feel like they wanted you to sympathize him with him, but it was too it was too quick, it was too throwaway. Like it didn't didn't quite work for me. But I think that's why he walks around like an idiot because he's got the gun. Mm-hmm. And so he's l- clearly a tough guy clear- just because he has a weapon. Nobody else has a weapon. That- everybody at the beach has to wear a bathing suit because the Mad Hatter says that – or the Hatter says that this way I can tell if you have a gun on you or not. So the only people who are allowed to have guns are a couple people. Well – And they're like the, the, the militants, right? <laughs> when the, Once the militants take over, it seems like everybody has guns then. <laughs> I know. Uh, yeah, they all of a sudden like thirty people have, are allowed to have guns. So, what about last boss? Um, other than like he's got an interesting story. He's an interesting character, but did he know how to use a sword? Because he has a. It kind of seems like he just sword. trained himself or something. Like he just was fully uh, immersed into this uh, crazy world. So I guess he learned how to use a uh, katana along the way somewhere. It kind of seemed like a wannabe to me, but. I yes, I was same. In too, I wasn't too, yeah. too thrilled with him as a character either. He was kind of lame, I thought, but he looks way cooler in the manga. Um, he does, yeah. Looks like a looks like a crazy witch person with tattoos all over his face and stuff like that. But. I think they, I think him and Naragi stood out differently. In, I mean, it's hard to probably behave like a cartoon character you know, on the mm-hmm. li- in live action and, you know, be somewhat believable. I, it didn't bother me too much, but yes, it's a bit cartoony. They're very animated. I mean, they were meant to be very over, over the, top. the top, but yeah. I think they're just awkward, nerdy fucking dudes who got weapons and they're just being bullies because they were tired of being outsiders and they took advantage yeah. of the situation. And the exactly. whole point is that there are people who are like the main character, right? Where Arisu he still is a good person, even shit is going down. But in this show, like or I'm sorry, but there are people like the other guys who take advantage of it. This happens oh, yeah. in um Squid Game, where people realize that they can kill each other if they want to, and it's the like, what kind of person are you? The kind that will just start killing people, or are you the kind that won't? Um That's the whole thing with this type of genre is like the people who will do the right thing versus the people who will do anything to survive or win the game. Like, you mm-hmm. know, they're willing to kill other people or, you know, throw other people under the bus to just get what they want. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's the, we're in the beach now and now it becomes, uh, more the, the games take a backseat and it's more of mm-hmm. unraveling the, the whole mystery, but it takes it. That also takes a backseat a little bit. And it's more of like Dave said, right? The the politics start kicking in, and yeah, I think this is weak. You get introduced to some cool Those characters, slower episodes, but but then it finally hits where the Hatter gets killed. We don't know why, and mm. um, Arisu was tricked into stealing the cards, and uh, so that uh, Chasia the the blonde haired guy who's like the shifty guy whatever and like his buddy Kuina Kuina Kina Kuina she's the girl that's always chewing on like 
a, a sucker or something like that mm-hmm. with the dreads. They kind of make a, they take advantage of that, and they, they are trying to get the cards, or they were trying to get the cards, and they used him. But anyway, he's captured, mm-hmm. and then ultimate the next... anime betrayal there, like it's huge. Like they, are, I mean, at first I liked uh, what whatever his name, oh, fuck, she's. Chisia, I butcher these names. Um, blonde haired, white, white haired dude. Yeah, long hair guy. Um, I thought you know he was working together with Arisu to figure out this thing, but yeah, they were just using him as bait essentially because the they were trying to get the cards, and it turns out the safe that they told Arisu to go to was the fake one, um, and they were just using him to find out where the real safe was yeah. that was holding the cards. Um, and yeah, that was just kind of a a, a kind of a dick move. There. He's like the little finger it was, of the show. Yeah. He's just like this I was going to say Grimo Worm just... Tongue, but yeah, same <laughs> yeah, thing. Yeah, same thing. All right. Yeah, he's yep. But like just using but people Quina, to get what he wants. But Queena, like she's like, I feel bad. Like I, you don't feel bad. Like this is fucked up. Like he's a good guy. He's a smart guy. And mm-hmm. We're we're totally taking advantage of him, screwing him over. But um, which I liked. That be, you didn't just write her off that she's just like this number two to him. She also has some conflict because I, she has her own arc. She actually has a fantastic arc because like the it's crazy. It's the like when you learn about Choda's background, uh, uh, you learn about Queena's background. Like some of the, the directing and the storytelling there is great. It's well done. Like when she has to like fight her dad or when she's a boy, you know, because she has mm-hmm. a sex change. Um, but when she was younger, she was a boy and like. She was fighting her father in was it karate that they were doing or taekwondo yeah. or what was that something like I that. I don't know, but they were like uh, I feel like in karate it's self defense and he his her father was just paid, straight up <laughs> punching her in the face. Yeah, I was beating the shit out of him. So yeah, but you kind of get introduced to that and then it kind of pays off later on. But um, but yeah, so you kind of learn about her character a little bit and you kind of see oh, there's a little dilemma, but the 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 beats turns into the next game arena and it sets mm-hmm. off an awesome the, the car that they're all. Yeah. This is when I think a cool it, it redeems itself and it, it does a really good job. This last two episodes, because this is what we signed up for. Uh, they, they just spent too long setting this up. Correct. Um, and it, it just, it, it does pay off in the end, but I feel like they spent like, what, what is it? Five episodes, five, six and seven kind of setting everything up. And seven, episode seven is kind of when we're introduced to this idea of the witch hunt, which is the fabled ten of hearts card, which is the, yes, the most difficult the final card. Yeah, that the final the final numbered card that they need. Yes. Um. So yeah, it's the ten of hearts, the most difficult game in the most difficult category, um, which is interesting. Uh, and go figure, because it's a power struggle right now because. Mm-hmm. The Hatter's been killed, right? And Hatter was just killed. Uh, the militants. And took Naragi over. basically convinced everybody for a Goonie to be in charge because a Goonie's just like the number two guy in his backstory. That he was like before all this happened, he was like a close friend with the Hatter in real life. Mm-hmm. And you learned that the Hatter had a failed club called uh, the Beach. Mm-hmm. So you kind of learn about. Like all that, so I mean, I, I I do appreciate, it, but they do all that in these last two episodes, anyways. So it's why didn't they sprinkle this in earlier? They cram it, yeah. They yeah. all cram it, cram it together. Um, yeah. So it's kind of a mystery of who killed Hatter at the beginning. Um, like we don't know. Well, it, at first, because Hatter's visa was about to expire, and he actually had to go and compete in a game. And right. when they when they brought his dead body back, they were like, "Oh, he died in the game. He got shot or whatever." But um, right. there was some suspic- suspicion around that. Um, so when the witch hunt starts, um, basically after Hatter's dead, the military is, the militants have taken over, and the object of the witch hunt. So this girl uh, Momoko gets murdered, like. So we think at the beginning. Yeah, she's got a um, knife stab right stuck in her chest, and she's yeah. dead, basically in the she's in the yep. main lobby. And the they were just like, "All right, well, so we got a new, yeah, like yeah, all this just kind of happens at the same time." Mm-hmm. Uh, like I yeah. was like trapped. He's like captured together. He's like bound and gagged in a chair, left alone, duct taped around the face. That sucked. I felt oh, bad yeah. for the guy there, just breathing through his nose. Yeah, that was pretty rough. Um, 
So they be, the way, object of the witch hunt game is basically find out who killed this girl and burn them in the I forgot what they call it the the, the, the witch fire, the fire or whatever. I don't know. There's yeah, there's a special name for the fire. I forget what it was, um, but that's the that's the object of the game. So the militants just kind of have this idea. Well, let's just fucking kill everybody and throw them into the fire until we find the witch. And that's horrible when logic. Chaos ensues. Yep. And yeah, there's just hundreds of dead people everywhere. Just people running around with guns, just shooting everybody on site. Not even no questions asked. Just mm-hmm. just yeah. mass chaos. And Everyone's then, um, getting gunned down at this point. It is out of control. And yeah, where did all these people with guns come from? Like the militant doubled right. in size because it was like around four people, five people, six people that I saw with guns to mm-hmm. thirty. People having guns. They might have, I think, yeah, the militants might have had, like, their followers or, like, some other, like, goons following them. Mm-hmm. But then, like, once they took over, they're like, okay, now everybody has a fucking gun. <laughs> right. Now, I actually don't mind this. It was chaotic, and it was actually kind of cool. The tension was really good. Arisu finally frees himself a little bit to the point where he can scream, and they can save him, get him out. And there's, like, this random character that I actually kept rooting for. I was like, man, he doesn't die. I don't know who he is. Um, the engineer kid. He has like the long hair with a hat. Yeah, in a t-shirt. Yeah. You meet you meet him in the first tag game. It was in his tag, first. Yep. That's it I was like his that first character. game, and yeah. Arisu rest like saves his life there. So he kind of owes him a little bit of a life debt. So mm-hmm. they're okay. kind of he's like he's a buddy buddy with him when they actually do rescue him. Like you save my life, I shall save yours. Kind of. Okay, I don't know. Yep. He he doesn't get much of that attention, but he's just like throughout the show, and I just find myself rooting for him, and I'm glad that he survives this whole ordeal. Um, but a lot of characters do get killed off. Um, so when it when it goes to the climax, Arisa Arisa gets free. He helps everybody kind of figure out who the witch is. Um, but a goonie, which is like a weird, it's like a weird long drawn out scene. They say they have like too 10, long. 15 minutes left. Yeah. Like the clock is at 10, 15 minutes and the episode goes on for like 45 minutes after that. And there's a lot of like over, uh, over talking about a lot of stuff. Yeah. They spend so much time looking for Arisu. Like they're trying to search for like where he is, all this bullshit. And Arisu, you just see him struggling, trying to escape and get out of the chair. And eventually he is able to Jimmy the duct tape off his mouth and he can yell for help. And they eventually find him and free him. Um, and then after that, I f- forgot, like you said, Dave, there's like, this is on episode seven, I think. And they, I think there's like 45 minutes or something left in the game. I think the game l- time limit was two hours. Um, and like, I don't know, there's just a weird time thing here, but whatever. There's, they're sitting in this, uh, room trying and Arisu's trying to determine like, He's trying to figure out, do his puzzle box Rain Man mind thing, trying to figure out who, <laughs> yeah. the, who the witch is. Um, and he kind of has a revelation, and whatever. And then this is like the climax where they all gather in the lobby with Arisu and whatever, all the characters and Aguni and everything. Um, and then this is uh, where everything is revealed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh- which is fine. Like I don't mind the climax. I think it works. I liked all the face-offs. I like how all the the bad guys seemingly die. Mm-hmm. They don't, but it turns out they don't. Um, but I liked it because they had like their backstories going on during the fight. I thought um, I thought the last boss fight was uh, pretty cool in the club against what's her face, and she kind of just kicked the shit out of him and. Knocked him out or whatever. Um, that was cool. Yeah, there's, like mm-hmm. the... there's that thing, and then there's uh, Naragi is up on the roof, like sniping people, and white haired dude shows up and ends up taking him out with a makeshift Zippo lighter du- duct tape to a yeah duct tape to a super soaker it's filled with sick. kerosene or whatever. Yeah, that was cool. I and just he... didn't like them throwing the cars in the air. Move. He was like, shoot him. Why it's a distraction? You... It's. Just... It's so he could get close to him, so he could. And he did uh, the he did the charge thing, arm. the charge thing, and yeah, he sprayed him down, and he falls off like a six story building on fire. Um, mm-hmm. it, and you think he's dead, but and he yeah, and he didn't some... returns at the end. How of the fuck eight. is he still alive? Come on, and, yeah, uh, which is he, dumb. But 
he starts fighting people off. I mean, he's a tall, this was skinny like guy. A, I don't know how strong this guy is. He shouldn't be that strong. And this was like, a diehard moment where, uh, what's oh, his name? Yeah, I forgot his, whatever the henchman's name where he gets hanged and then he comes back at the end. Right, and like that reminded me uh, a mm-hmm. lot of a a diehard moment there. Yeah, but uh, Usagi and um, Arisu uh, together they they fight him enough, but then he gets up with this because he's got an Uzi and he's you think it like. Arisu is at least going to die, but that's when Asagi, I'm sorry, Asagi, Aguni, um, even though he's kind of like dead inside because he had to kill the Hatter in his flashback, like he's kind of a mess. And he just wants it all to end. He just wants to die and he's just telling everybody he's the witch and he's not, right? Mm-hmm. Um, at this point, we don't, I don't think we know who the witch is. Maybe we do. But anyways, he, he saves Arisu from being shot. And it's actually kind of cool because this is actually the coolest scene for this character. He, he just no, he's just getting shot one by one by these bullets, was, and he's just running into it. He, he just grabs them and he just runs off into the the smoke and fire. And this, you just hear the shots go off a couple more times, and then the two of them don't get up. And there's I a ton of uh, cool. cool like anime I, I think he's still alive. Like there's there's he's got to be still alive. I mean, this was this was adapted from a manga, but um, which which you can definitely see like there's a ton of like anime style moments like when he when Aguni was running at uh, what's his face? Fucking God, Naragi. Yeah. Naragi. Yeah. Naragi. He's, you just see in slow motion the bullets just grazing off his shoulders as mm-hmm. he's running towards him. And then he just tackles it like that was a cool that was a cool scene for sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean the action definitely is good in this. Like the fights are good, uh, the editing is good. It's just the pacing. They they just have too much going on, but it's not. Mm-hmm. I can see why you got like mostly like eighty, you know, upper seventies or eighty kind of like ratings. Um, I would say that's where it is. I, it's definitely worth watching. I think it's interesting. I love that there's characters, and I. I care about those characters more than I am caring about in the Squid Game currently, and I'm like halfway into mm-hmm. that show, and I don't care about anybody yet. There's nobody that's really like like I'm rooting for <laughs> in that show. It might change. I just got to finish watching it. But mm-hmm. on this one, they got me in like the first episode. I was like, I like these three guys. Jonah! What are your uh, What are your guys' feelings yeah. on the the ending reveal there in the last episode? Oh, uh, I yeah, I don't know. This was. Because okay, it's weird because the the witch is revealed, and mm-hmm. it was um, Momoko, I think is her name. Momoko, right? She, which is she, the girl who died. Which it turns she out she herself. actually killed herself. She killed and you herself. Find that the other girl is her partner, and the two of them have been setting traps and helping create the mm-hmm. games from whoever's running this, or else they would die. And they were starting to feel so bad about all the death that they've been um, assisting with. That I, she kind of says, I gotta. She kills herself thinking that'll save the game. Maybe I don't remember. Mm-hmm. Listen, this is a dumb thing, but the the uh, whatever the executive who's like the mortician lady who investigates all this stuff. She was Anne. like a forensic forensic. Yeah, and she was a forensic officer before all this stuff. And she dusted for fingerprints on the knife, and it revealed that it was a reverse grip, so that Momoko must have killed herself. But oh, someone could have held. That. Yeah. But my thing is, like, someone could have held the knife as a reverse grip and still stabbed her. You know, that doesn't mean that she stabbed herself. Like, I don't know. I thought that was dumb. Okay. It was for the purpose sure. of the show, I can see. Her Whatever. character in general, I didn't really care for. I was like, you don't do anything for the plot. Like, we could have done all mm-hmm. this without you. And there's yeah. already a lot of characters. What were you going to say, Dave? Uh, no, uh, nothing really. I was just going to say that uh, er- Erisu had already kind of solved it, and then she kind of just came in and like confirmed what everybody thought confirmed it. i thought that yeah. was dumb so basically yeah. they throw her in the fire whoever's left wins the game the entire hotel of the beach burns down and basically mm-hmm. that party is the party the is, is no more you don't gotta go home but you gotta get the fuck out of here <laughs> right so. now there was one of the executives she was really weird um but her name was mira and i don't mm-hmm. know when at what point she disappears but she's definitely like in the Shh. middle episodes for a while and she's the one with the, like the bangs and then yeah and then so then when those two girls that we were just talking about that did the witch game um even though they both die they do have uh they kind of took 
footage of what they were doing somehow. And yeah. so like the, the characters that are still alive, they see this video and they see, they kind of learn about where or how they were getting their Intel to set up the games. So they figure out how to get to that location. Now, uh, this is weird, but like, how? What did we see exactly? Because there's like another so, layer where the other people are alive and they're betting. And yes, my impression is that, like, I guess you're made to think that this is like the headquarters of everything. Like the this is like controlling the game, like the central system or whatever that's controlling all the games. But when they got to that whatever underground station it's it's like deep in the subway system they found the station and it turns out everyone's dead there and they all have like the lasers like shot through their heads like you can see like the holes in their heads and it it's indicating that they got all got shot through the head with the lasers so that was like its own like meta game within the game like you said they were like betting on all of these different games and somehow they had their own game going on, and they must have lost, and they all died. Okay. I, I didn't think that. Yeah, because they're all at dead. The end, at the end, yeah, we at find the end they reveal, dead. yeah, at the end they reveal like, oh, the, there's another layer above this. Like, there's someone who's controlling, like these people as well. So, like, there's a top layer to this that we haven't yet right. seen. So, Mira, who we were talking about shows up on the big screen yeah. and she's mm-hmm. she says let's let's start the next round which is like the which face, the card face cards yeah right? i don't know awesome. who those two girls were why they were picked, well those two but... girls said though too during the through yeah. their videos or whatever that like they also have visas and they have to go set up these games and like do exactly like participate That's like part it, of yeah, their to, game for them to get their visas so they can stay alive too so they're also trapped in it but yeah like i said there's like there's like a meta game layer. There's like the bottom level games that are set up. And then there's the next level, which is the girls and all those betting people are on. It's their own game where, like you said, they get extra days on their visas for setting up the games. And then there's a layer above that, the people who are controlling everything. So there's multiple layers to this thing. I did like the exiting shot where they kind of just show... Um, that was cool. These blimps throughout Tokyo and just dra- having these massive face cards and uh, you just got dropped with a, all right, what the hell's going on now? Well, it makes you, yeah, it definitely makes you think that these face cards are like a lot bigger deal than like the previous like smaller scale games. So something something big's going down in the, in the next season. They're setting it up. Did Do you guys think they're really is any connection to Alice in Wonderland other than Alice was living in a one world and then she chased a rabbit and falls down and goes into this crazy world where she's constantly meeting weird character, weird situation over and over and over again. And she's not really, I don't know, she's kind of in harm's way a little bit, but she's just always kind of in these weird situations. Well, part of it. Um, there's, there's the, the hatter, hatter. There's the cards. But they, yeah, but they have some things on the like, nose. The cards. There's are kind some of the things thing. yeah. in the in the manga, which I started reading. Uh, like they don't they don't go to the borderlands or whatever you want to call it. Um, the same way it's they they don't hide in a bathroom. It's like the fireworks go off. It gets super bright, and then they wake up in like the dusty bar, and everything's covered with dust. And Tokyo's Tokyo's actually like huh. overgrown. There's just like shit all over, like in the streets and everything. I didn't get I didn't get too far huh. into it. So there's cl- clear there's some kind of yeah. time jump. Yeah, but it's more of like a Arasu is talking about how he wishes like he was making a wish about how things could be different and stuff like that. And then the fireworks go off, things get super bright, and then they just wake up and they're boom there. So. A little bit different of how they hmm. fall okay. down the rabbit hole, but I mean, some of the, I mean, you got the cards, you got the, I, the hatter is just a name or whatever, but, um, yeah, there's no, uh, there's no Hunger Games in Alice in Wonderland, but it's more of like the, I think it's like the metaphor of the Wonderland being like, you know, the place where like fucking anything can happen. There's nothing makes, there's no rhyme or reason to mm-hmm. anything. Things just happen and there's like... The Queen of Hearts is probably Mira uh, at some point. I don't know. But uh, 
Right. Yeah. So there's, yeah. There's the overarching control over everybody, but I still think it could be aliens. Who knows? So just aliens, alternate just, dimension, some shit. Cheshia is his name supposed to sound like Cheshire cat or whatever? I wonder. He acts like him. Maybe. You know, yeah. he's smug. I, and I he's feel like, like I'm sure. I'm sure there's a lot of like analogies here that we're just not yeah. seeing. And he's on Ravelmore, which uh, season two, I guess, is coming out relatively soon after I this. I think they're thing. done shooting yeah, already. Right? I think they're in post production, so mm-hmm. it should be out. I'm a, I'm gonna okay. guess in the spring sometime of 2022. Okay. I'm curious what the second season is going to be about because I would say the first season is all about outsiders. You're t- you know, not your ideal citizen, but people who are lazy or people who are um I don't know, they just do they just do bad things, right? In in their personal lives and or maybe even people who are victims, but they get put into the situation and then the decisions that they're making really reveal the kind of person they really are. All of these characters, we see what they would do in those crazy situations. Like in episode three with the wolf versus the lambs, they all kind of look, they want to c- capture um, Arisu, you know, they, they want to mm-hmm. capture at one point and they go through all their emotions, all the characters, um, the, the final showdown between the boss and, um, Quina, where he is like this extreme weirdo who like writes about death. Remember, and they show like his blog and has zero mm-hmm. views, zero comments. Like nobody's into this stuff, but he lives in this weird, dark world where he just yearns for like purpose of like life or death situation. But when he finally gets it, he he like is obsessed with it and he doesn't want to leave it. He like he's like I love this, but he also likes to kill people like he's killing people with his sword and he's just like an evil guy so mm-hmm. where she's like my dad rejected me i i want to be a woman um even though i was born a boy i want to be a woman and the father basically kicks him or her out of the family but the mom accepts her and the mom's sick and dying and she wants to go back to see her mom you know even her dad's like advice where you know, always take the final blow. Like, don't just hesitate. And she uses it, even though, like, this guy is, like, not a good father figure. She still uses her his advice. Like, everybody is, like, this outcast of some way. But they're all mm-hmm. put in these situations where the theme is, like, what would you do? I don't know if that's going to continue throughout the whole series. But in season one, it seemed like that's why we got all these backstories. Because they all take Seems advantage like of it. Because even the Hatter, you he think he's a nice guy and he's given hope. But it, it just went to his head. He just wanted to be a god to people. Like you said, he was like, it's a cult. And he just, mm-hmm. and a goonie was like, uh-uh, that's not what, you know, like, I, you were enough for me. Like, that was enough hope for me. It was just what, the two of us doing this together. You made the beach and I don't believe in it anymore. And that's when he, you know, they kind of go at it. So I, I don't know. I, They're I gonna, they'll be back. I'm sure a goonie will be back. Uh, Last oh, yeah. boss will be back. Listen, uh, there's always Naragi, a I hope he's of thumb. There's always a rule of thumb in TV shows. If you don't see the character physically die on screen, that does not mean sure. that they're dead. And they're probably still the old alive. Walking Dead. The old Walking Dead. Thing, exactly. Yeah. exactly. That happened a lot on that one. So, so when Naragi's engulfed no. in fire and falls three, four stories down to his death, Listen, that's not on screen death. There was not a shot of his dead body, so that <laughs> does not mean he's dead. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you just got to suspend some disbelief with this show because after I found out it was a manga, I kind of was like, oh, all right, I can kind of Listen, forgive a lot of this stuff. Like we, at the beginning where they're... We don't even know like, if it's it's in real life. It could, like I said, it could be a simulation. So I don't know. The beginning, like when the, the three guys get there, they're like running around the city looking for people. And then like at the end of the episode, uh, the one guy like says, I forfeit my visa or whatever, and the laser shoots him or whatever. And mm-hmm. then like it pans up to the sky and you see like hundreds of lasers going off like yep. everywhere. Like if you dudes were running around the city, you would have ran into somebody like there's people everywhere in this city. It's just like some of those dumb things you got to just forget about because it's, they're either doing things for like the cool shot or you just got to ignore logic. Sometimes I totally am with you on that. I know if you're yeah, going to, if you're going to make rules, 
like be careful with the rules. I don't like yeah. to see this. Yeah, it's a little sloppy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, like the there's... beach, the beach parties that, was, that aggravated me for like. We can't find the beach. What is this beach place? And then they look at it from like halfway across the city. There's a shot of just like this beacon of a hope mm-hmm. on the other side of the water. It's just fucking dumb. Well, it's true because, yeah, the, the rest of the city, there's no electricity or anything. But this one no. place has and like, it should electricity be, and you should be able to hear it off. You should be able to hear a pin drop in the city because there's no music. There's no cars. There's no mm-hmm. electricity anywhere. And you have a thumping party heading on over there where people are just getting hammered and driving cars and screaming mm-hmm. and which i'm just thinking well, about this now we like it kind of the whatever the beach having electricity and all that is kind of foreshadows that it is going to be a location for the game because the only places that have electricity or anything is the places where a game is occurring so i thought i'm sure you kind of just like that right now it just clicks on randomly too mm-hmm but really, like, yeah, the best part is the games. I want to see more games. I want to see more yeah, trickery. More games. I want to see more all sorts of... Not, I don't want to see people murder each other, but the the puzzles and the the head games that the, the cards bring with them is the super cool. I have a feeling that they're going to try to go too big with Season 2. Like, the, I liked the fact that That's what I'm thinking. the game... The games in this were like small scale, like three, four people had to figure out this a way out of this thing. This the ending shot with the huge face cards makes me think like this. These games are going to incorporate like hundreds of people and it's going to be like a huge battle royale style, like last man standing (laughs) type thing. Yeah, it'd be weird. The, The manga didn't run for terribly long. It started in 2010. And it's it says it was in the. Shonen Sunday comics, which kind of makes me think, like, what kind of like Sunday comics do they have in Japan where they can just kind of like <laughs> put this kind of manga and like the Sunday Sunday comics? Right. That was cool, but it only ran for I think six years, and then mm-hmm. it was kind of done. So I don't know how how much story they have to work with, or mm-hmm. if they're going to expand on it, or if they're going to keep going with it. But it's it's super cool. I believe the guy that wrote it was also involved in the production of it which makes me feel better about it in general so yeah closing thoughts for me overall like i enjoyed like i said i enjoyed the smaller scale stuff the first three episodes were definitely stand out when they started to get into like the bigger scale stuff i think they like we said before the pacing was just off they tried to rush it too much the i mean the beach could have been like an entire season um the ten of hearts twist was fucking good though the hearts twist was good, yeah. I th- I think the character building they did a decent job with the character building, and it made me care about uh, a lot of the main characters. Um, but yeah, I liked it overall. Um, just felt a little bit rushed towards the end. It, it this was also kind of like a bell curve thing. Like it started out strong in the beginning, dipped a little bit in the middle, and then went back up at hmm. the end. So agree, I totally agree. agree. All that. I can't wait for season two. I will definitely, uh, I'll be binging that for sure. Yeah, it it it's, starts off strong, it ends strong, mm-hmm. and it, it's a little bit weaker in the middle. The transition is just a little rough. Could It should have been two seasons. Like uh, with The Walking Dead, how uh, they had the farm for the second season. That's probably what they could have done with uh, That's what I'm thinking. the beach. Like, if they spent the a little bit more time to f- flesh it out a bit. Um, it could have been uh, a little bit better. The beach could have definitely been its own season because it it was pretty dense. There was a lot of characters, a lot of moving parts going on. And then if the climax at the end would have been a, a good season finale. Agreed. Uh, yeah, otherwise, it's got a lot of shit going on. A lot of characters, a lot of things happen. The action is really good. Uh, the games are awesome. Watch those first three episodes and then... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Do what you Make want with sure the middle ones. Watch it in Japanese, <laughs> I was and say, not the dub version. I, I hope you watched it before you listen to this. Is my other. Oh yeah, true. Yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> we just spoiled everything for you. Um, Get out of here. Get. So uh, that's it. <laughs> Go that's watch Alice it. in Borderland Netflix show. So uh, season two is coming out, but for right now, let's take a break, and then Dave's got a new game for us to new play. New game. Nomad yeah. Feud coming up. Oh, there we go. All right, let's do it.
All right, we're back, and we're back with a game. It's a new game, which is exciting. I love when we make a new game. Dave is going to host this one. What's this game called, Dave? Nomad Feud. <laughs> Nomad Feud. It's a little take on that old popular game that shall not be mentioned. <laughs> How exciting. Um, okay, so mm-hmm. you're going to be the host. Mm-hmm. Eric and I are going to go against each other. Mm-hmm. But do you mind just kind of going over the rules real quick so we all know sure. how to play this? So we'll go. We'll take turns going back and forth. I will uh, ask a question, and with a certain amount of answers, you guys will be able to make a guess. Go back and forth. Three strikes and you're out, or three strikes and basically it'll be the other person's turn, and we'll we'll end it there after one more guess from the next person and. Uh, Basically, we'll add up your points for each question, and whoever has the most points at the end will be our big wiener. Sweet. Woo. Okay. So it should be uh, fairly straightforward. These questions are a mix of uh, gaming and movie general questions. You'd be Ready. surprised how hard it is to find to find uh, Family Feud questions based on like video games and stuff like that. It's It was not easy to find these, so... Okay. Uh, I guess. Um, why don't... I'm a master at Family Feud, just, just warning you. Okay, well... Are you really? You, you I can used get... to watch Family Feud all the time, man. I oh, was a big game show kid. Like, Price is Right, Family Feud, all those shows. Okay. Hmm. Um, Eric, I'm thinking of a number between 1 and 10. What is it? Hmm. The 7 of hearts. <laughs> Brandon? I will go four of clubs. Four of clubs. Uh, Brandon will take this one. I chose the five of diamonds. Ooh. So hey. You are the first person to answer. Okay. Uh, first question. There are five answers on the board. hundred people were surveyed. <laughs> Besides video games, Brandon, name another kind of game you play at an arcade. Uh, like an alley roller. Skee ball um, is is the correct ski ball answer. Is an alley roller. Does Boom. that? Do I still get points for that? Ding ding ding! You get eleven points for that. Eleven people 11. out of a hundred oh, said said skee ball. Eric. Oh boy! Hundred people were surveyed. Four answers left. The top four are on the board. Mm-hmm. Besides video games, name another kind of game you play at an arcade. Um, let's go with the uh, the basketball game. Ding, ding, ding! Basketball is correct. That is the number four answer. Sweet, worth 14, 14 points. So we will go back to Brandon. Eric is leading with fourteen to eleven. Brandon, besides video games, name another kind of game you play at an arcade. Sure. Uh, <laughs> can I say, like, um, air hockey? Ooh, ding, ding, ding. That is another correct oh, answer. Was, that was going to be my answer. Uh, that is our number three answer, uh, worth 15 points. How oh, exciting. So that is number three, number four, and number five. Top two answers are still on the board. Eric. I got it. Name another kind of game you play at an arcade. I'm going to say the crane game. Ooh. That is a big fat. (laughs) What? I thought that was up there for sure. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who was surveyed or where the survey was taken. So just, just, (laughs) just go with me there. But. You get a big fat X for that answer, but oh man, Ticket Redemption and Crane Games, those are all shit, anyways. Nobody wants to play those. <laughs> it's just they're just there to steal your money and make your kids want to spend more. So, it's Brandon, true. very true. Besides video games, name another kind of game you play at an arcade. Can I say bubble hockey? <laughs> you could you could say bubble hockey. You can say whatever you want. Yeah, I want to say bubble hockey. that is a big x sorry uh there's no bubble bubble hockey on this list hmm 
top two answers are still out there. Top two answers, huh? I'll let you know. I'll let you know. Number one, number one is a big chunk of points. Okay. I think I know what I'm going to say next. Then I don't. Besides video games, name another kind of game you played in arcade. Um, man, I'm running low on uh, answers here. Um, I'm gonna say. <laughs> I don't know why I'm thinking of that like token uh, slider game. A pusher, a token pusher. Pusher, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, and damn it, there's another, Fuck. there's another X. Eric with two X's, our resident Family Feud expert. I know I shouldn't uh, have said that. I'm gonna make myself one more. Look bad. So if <laughs> yeah, so if Eric gets another X, Brandon, I'll give you one more guess. But you are on the clock right now. Uh, pool. Like cool. billiard. Billiards is eh, not at the arcades. Man. This is tough. I feel like there's an obvious one, clearly, Last that we're missing. one for Eric. Okay. There are lots of games at arcades these days, besides video games. Okay. What, what would you play at an arcade? Hmm. What would I play at an arcade if I were to What do you go... One? You got a pocket full of quarters that are just burning a hole. What do you look for? What do those quarters go to? Um, shit. Uh, whack a mole. I don't fucking know. Ooh. Mm-hmm. No, that is not a correct answer. Damn it. That is your third X. Brandon, I will give you the last guess. Uh, one of those boxing games where like you have to punch it really hard. Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> what? What Close. You, have people that have been to Dave and Buster's? Well, what are they? I don't, what know, are they? I don't know what kind of arcades. Number two answer is foosball. Foosball. What year? Foosball. Is, what am I, I, mean, I love foosball. What foosball am I finding Dude, in an arcade? What year was this? Number one From question. Number one answer on the board. Eighties. Pinball. Pin okay, that's the obvious one. Pinball is the right. obvious one. Pinball that was the big yeah, one. That Eric, is the obvious one. That, that? that was forty four points. Everything else was sixteen, fifteen, fourteen. So Okay. Uh right now, Brandon is leading uh twenty six to fourteen. All right. And we Here will get into question number deuce. This is my redemption uh, round. Brandon, you had the last guess there and the first guess on this one, or on the first question. So I'm going to give first guess to Eric on here. Eric, in action movies, top four answers on the board. In action movies, name something the hero is always trying to get his hands on. Hmm. Um, how about the the bad guy, the villain? The bad guy. Ding, ding, ding. That is answer number four. Uh, worth 15 points here. Good answer. Good answer. This is, in, this is in the game. Game you're saying? Not a movie, but a game? This is in movies. In action movies. Action oh, movies. movies. In action uh, well, movies. Well, my, so, so. my guess is going to be the same. I was just trying. Okay. Uh, the woman? Something... Like the girl? The guy uh, who was trying to get, the, get to the girl? Yes. Ding, ding, ding. Leading lady. That was my is yeah, that answer was my number next two. Next guess. Answer number two worth 28 points. That was a good one. We still have number one and number three out there. Something in action movies. The hero is always trying to get. It says his hands on, but we're going to say their hands on. Let's be honest. Um, <laughs> how about some weapons? Uh, ding. Yes. That is answer number three. three. Yeah. I got number one for uh, you. That's the gun. The gun is a weapon. And we will give that one to you. Uh, back to Brandon. What is yeah, the it's gonna be... to get his hands on? Uh, treasure. Ding. That is number one. Money. Uh, yeah. I was going to say money, but I don't know. I, I don't know. When I was you thinking said... of. Yeah, when you said weapon and it was three, I was like, then it's not going to be like the bomb. Because, like, you know, sometimes they just got to defuse a bomb to win or something. I thought about saying money, but I was like, uh. Yeah, uh, uh. treasure was all that was left. Yep, good one. 
what's the what's the point total? Let me just do a let me just do a quick tally here. Sorry, I have to uh, use a calculator because that's much quicker. Um, Eric is at forty nine. Brandon is at eighty seven. We're gonna need a big yeah. Brandon Brandon got those top two answers. Yeah, we're gonna need a big round three. Um, let's go to. Is it hearts? It's a heart <laughs> game, isn't it? It's a, it's a heart game. Yeah. Two of hearts. No, these are only all one of us. Only these one are... of us is walking out of this alive. <laughs> Brandon, name for me something people are often chased by in movies. Oh, a monster. Monster is the number mm-hmm. one answer. I was gonna say monster. You bastard <laughs> oh he's pulling it he's pulling away mm. uh there are five five uh. answers four left brandon got the top one with monster something people are often being chased by in movies cars cars <laughs> nice nice choice ding 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 number two answer wow nice. i never okay. would have yeah cars so that, that is that number one and number two about. off the board we still have three left, three, four, five. Something people are being chased by in movies. Um, animals? Not a bad one. Uh, I would give that to you. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, dogs is number okay. five answer. People hmm. do often get chased by dogs. They're usually guarding something. If you're smart, you just bring a bag of steaks with you and just throw them to the side and the dogs are just (laughs) out of the equation automatically. Uh, Unless it's the Simpsons and they throw it and the dogs just eat it while they're in the air and then they're like, no. (laughs) (laughs) Two answers left. We have number three and number four. Uh, Um, Name something people are chased by in movies. I mean, I guess this this is kind of going off the other one, but I guess the villain or the antagonist. Uh, bad guys, yes, is on the board. Sweet. That is answer number four worth another ten points. We have one answer left. Going back to Brandon. He's got that look <laughs> on his face like he's thinking so they're, hard. They're being chased by the past. <laughs> Final answer? They're past. Yeah. Nah, that is not a that is too too metaphorical for the family <laughs> feud. Need something literal here. Um, oh, we're all back to Eric. People being chased in movies. Who is chasing them? Or what is chasing the only thing, them? Or things, the only thing that what? I can think of is uh like an angry mob. Angry mob, I'm gonna give you a big X on that one. Eh. Damn it. So sorry. You guys are uh, running low. Usually these last ones are tough to get. Something people are chased by in movies. Uh, Chased by the military. Mm. I'm going to say ding, ding, ding on that one. I'm going to give that one to you. What? Is it it enforcement or something? Come on. The cops. The cops. The cops. Okay. I was going to go with cops next. Everybody's always getting chased by the cops in these movies. Well. I think it's safe to say Brandon won this one. Uh, that was, you know, that was three questions. Um, I do have a couple more. It's good thing you watched all that Family Feud back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Burn. Yeah, shouldn't have said that. I feel like I haven't won a game in a while. Um, we can't. We can keep going if you guys want to do a couple more. Um, let me just add up these totals real quick for you. Yeah, what do, what do we got for point totals uh, here? Brandon is at 116. Eric is at 81. So this is definitely, you can definitely come back in here if you get a couple couple good answers. Unlock I'll one. entertain it. Okay. If you got another one, I'll let it. I'm, I'm, I'm nothing, s- baby. Yeah, I got more in the tank. Bring it in. Question number <laughs> four. We'll do, we'll do this one. Uh... And who are we on for the first one? Brandon, Eric, Brandon. We'll be Eric for this one. Uh, Okay, let's do it. Name a game you need dice to play. Yahtzee. Yahtzee. Uh, This is top four answers are on the board. Uh, Yahtzee is the number two answer. 
Nice. I'll take it. That's a that's Grandma. a that's a healthy chunk of Grandma. That's a thirty. Like that's Yahtzee. a thirty four banger. That's a yeah. that's a good answer. That's my wife. Uh, all right, we have number one, number three, and number five on the board. Name a game you need dice to play. Dungeon and Dragons. That is a great answer. Don't tell me that's number one. No, that is not number one. That is number, okay, f- that is number four. Really? Oh, wow. Yes, you do need Dungeons Dungeons and Dyson to play Dungeons and Dragons, but uh, it's mm-hmm. not the number one answer. We have uh, number one and number three still on the board for you, Eric. Name a game you need I mean, dice. Let me just go with uh, an obvious one here. I mean, Monopoly. Can't play Monopoly without dice. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Don't call it a comeback. But Eric pulls out the number one answer. Yeah, worth, baby. Worth uh, 45 big ones. I and we go my words. <laughs> we go back to Brandon. <laughs> what have I done? After... After you let us extend the game a little bit, well, we'll see. But uh, nobody has nobody has any the X's. Card. There is one question left. It is the number three answer on the board. Game you need dice to play. Yeah, you need dice to play a game that is called <laughs> this. <laughs> Stalling. Uh, all right. This what about like imaginary? Sorry. Dice on the... What about what about sorry? Sorry, no. Sorry, you play with cards too, Brandon. Come on. Ah, and... I couldn't remember. Sorry, that's draw... incorrect. Yeah, you draw the cards for that one, bud. Uh, yeah, Brandon is not the board game aficionado of the group, so it might be a little. I think you're thinking of trouble with the popper, the popomatic bubble. Um, yeah, but that is that is a die that is not dice either. So I'm gonna that's true. I'm gonna disqualify that, is, that one, one from the game as well. That was not my answer. No, it is not. Um, game you need dice for, Eric. Game you need dice for. We've had Monopoly. Mm. We've had Yahtzee. We've had Dungeons and Dragons. There is one more answer out there. What? So there's one more answer on the board, eh? Huh. Okay. Uh, is it too obvious just to say dice? Mm, yeah, shooting dice. Yeah, I'd say that's probably a little too obvious. No, all right. Um, there's a name for that game when you're shooting dice, but I don't know the name for that game. I don't know. I don't know. I don't play dice on the streets, so I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't. Street dice is not the number three answer. Just, okay, all right. I can't. I can't think of a. I know, right? Hmm. Is it me? Is it? Brandon? It, it is. is it? It's still you, Eric. I, I, I. Dice was my answer. Oh, dice was your answer. Oh, no, okay, sorry. That's yeah. That's oh, okay. Um, the my guess is gonna be. Oh wow, this is really hard. Uh, isn't there a game called um. Jacks? Is it right? Like you toss down a bunch of things with a die in there and then you count them isn't it called jacks are you talking about the one with a bouncy ball where you bounce the ball and you pick up the jacks are you talking Apparently, about like, that's there's no are you talking about are you talking about the casino right. eh, eh. are you talking about the casino game where you throw the things no or the bo- oh, don't the give him the answer one. no i was not i wasn't that's not what i was saying i was thinking the jacks with the ball with when you caught the oh the, yeah there's no dice in that game shit Okay, well now you got me thinking. <laughs> oh, what is that called? I know, I know the casino game with dice. Well, it's your turn. Uh, oh, you actually guessed I Jax? Ha- okay, sorry. I'm gonna give you a big fat X on that. Yeah. Um. So, what was? I was just thinking of something else. I was thinking of life, like the game of life, <laughs> but that's got a spinny. Now one. you got me. Th- now you got me. Uh, oh, that's true. There's no fucking dice in that game. Well, now you got you kind of gave me the answer. Uh, I want to say craps now. It is craps. Yes, it is craps. I couldn't think of the name anyways. I only got it. I thought you were saying jacks. I thought jacks was supposed to be craps. I didn't mean to spoil anything there. <laughs> Sorry. I noticed my no. I was not. After I... I wasn't even thinking that. And here, uh, oh man, 
Shit. Craps. Vegas vacation, basically. Um, I was, yeah, I wasn't thinking of that either. I was thinking strictly, like, board games. Home saves, board games. Yeah. All right, well, oh my gosh, a quick. Oh, we got one. And it was the fourth one. Damn. <laughs> well, I'm going to say this, Brandon. You got a hole to dig out of now, buddy. Uh, oh, what's, you are what, now, else, what is You it? are now down solidly after that round four trouncing. Uh, Brandon is at 121. Eric is up at 174. Oh, my All God. Right. Last round, baby. Yeah. You, you, basically, oh, sh- you basically got five points, and he got the other 95 out of that one. So, Oh, uh, damn. This will be uh. the last... The last one. There are five answers on the board. Brandon, you have first guess. Okay. Na- name a type of crisis that usually happens at least once in an action Ooh, movie. Another action movie question. Oh, specifically in an action movie, a crisis? Crisis that happens in an action movie. Uh, terrorists. Like hostages. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna need. I need you to be more specific. What are the terrorists doing? Just give me a. The they're uh they put a bomb on something and they're gonna blow everybody up or they, and they took hostages. <laughs> That's pretty specific. <laughs> That's not an answer. They put a they put a bomb on things and they're taking people hostage. All right, I'm gonna give you a uh, ding. I'm gonna give you the number Let's two answer. Explosion. I was slash gonna fire. say explosion. That was gonna be my answer. But the crisis, that's... yeah. What you said, action movie, because that makes it feel like if it's an action. Well, no, all right, whatever. Ignore me. Okay, I'll take the point. Mm-hmm. And shut up. Terrorists are blowing stuff up. Mm-hmm. Uh, explosion slash fire is the number two answer. Uh, over to Eric. Things that usually happen at least once in an action movie. Crisis that usually happens. Um, I don't know. Someone gets shot. Or killed? Uh, Ding, I'm going to give you that one. That is a violent crime. Okay. The number one answer. Okay. Oh, damn. Well, shit. Uh, That is worth a... That's a worth a whopping 38. I think you might have just sealed it with that one. Yeah, there's nothing I can do with that. We'll see. Back to Brandon. Crisis that happens in an action movie. Uh, A close character uh, to the protagonist dies. Uh no, I don't see that Damn. one on here. I'm gonna give you. A, I'm gonna give you an X. Over yeah. to Eric. Um, <laughs> like a I don't know if a car chase is a crisis really. Um, like a car crash maybe. That is the number four answer. Car crash slash chase. Oh, so, there so, we go. Got them I'll both. I don't like this word crisis. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know a set piece I don't know what you want to call it but it is a that is a crisis a car chase uh, we got two left the number three and number five answer for Brandon I don't know the main character got fucking laid off and then he got grabbed the gun and started shooting people <laughs> there's your goddamn crisis <laughs> where's my job uh, no unemployment is not a crisis that happens in action movies <laughs> so sorry <laughs> I'll give you an X for that one uh, Eric uh, Any other brain busters? What's the what's what is it? Number three answer? Oh, uh, we have number three and number five are still oh, oh number three oh, and shit. five. Um, some sort of natural disaster. Uh no, that was a no, good answer. No, but survey says. Eh. Back to Brandon. Two X's. Your life is on the line. Tell me something. The some kind of crisis that happens in an action movie. The the hero is captured by the bad guys. Uh, I'm gonna give you that one. Ding! Kidnapping. Kidnapping. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Number three answer for 16 points. We got the last one all the way down at the bottom. Wait, what's that? I... They had double points on that one. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> oh. Daily double. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Eric, you going to close it out? A crisis that happens, at least once in an action movie. I don't know if this would be qualify as the same thing as like an explosion, but just like a fire, something on fire. Uh, explosion fire was number two. 
Oh, fire. Okay, that I didn't know. Fire Explosion slash fire. Got it. Okay. Hmm. All right. Then a crisis in an action movie. Um. A, an airplane crash. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Good guess, but I'm going to give you the big X on that one. Nope. <laughs> Brandon, you got an answer or you got an X? Yeah, the heroes get split up, separated somehow. Uh, no. Damn. That's a crisis. Sep- separation anxiety, not on the list. Nah. <laughs> and Eric for the final. Hmm. What about war? War never War. changes. War certainly does change, but not in Fallout. Um, I'm going to give you an X because you got enough points anyways. And, <laughs> uh, this wasn't specific enough. The last one was uh, a fight. A Could fight. be war. Okay. No. That's a crisis? Branded, branded, that's a fight. There's all sorts of fights in the... Depends... How big of a fight it is, I guess. All right, so we have a. Uh, well, I got slaughtered. Up the game <laughs> with one fifty-seven could have ended it after three, three questions. If we ended it after three rounds, eh, who cares? You would have won. And Eric ended up with uh, two twenty-five with the big win. I felt bad. Eric nice. said he hasn't won in a while, and I was just like. <laughs> He needs a he needs an opportunity to feel. Good. Thank That's you, like that. yeah. Thank you for the win. Oh, that there's is a, hell a there's of a, a score sheet, sheet there. for you. Oh. Right, that. Oh wow, look at that. Nice. Nice. That's how we're keeping tally today. Nice, nice work, guys. Oh, we're we went pretty well. Yeah, that was fun. Those questions the questions are very hard to find. Um, there's not a lot of specific like nerd uh, family feud going on these days. So, mm-hmm. okay, I don't know how to. Uh, how to come up with more of those for next week, but we'll f- make Figure that next week's problem. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Okay. So, well, that was fun. Damn. I should have uh, stopped while I was ahead, but I, lesson learned. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't bet. <laughs> uh, Eric, why don't you plug our social real quick and then, yeah, we can get out of here. Cause we're going to be talking about uh nightmare before Christmas. Yeah. Get into the Christmas spirit next week. Um, so you can pretty much find us at Nomads of Fantasy on everything at Twitter, on Twitter and Instagram, um, Facebook, our new Facebook page. Uh, you can follow us on our Facebook page and listen to the podcast right from there, which is pretty handy. Um, yeah, I, we got our Twitch channel as well. Twitch.tv slash Nomads of Fantasy hasn't been super active lately, but, uh, I still want to get back to Symphony of the Night. I'm about halfway through that. So hopefully I'll get back to that soon. Maybe dip into a couple other things on there. Um, but maybe we'll have some fun streams in the future. We've talked about like a board game stream, maybe in the future, uh, <laughs> maybe, uh, we'll streaming, see. streaming out our impressions on the, the Amico when it, if, if it ever comes out, we'll definitely have an episode someday. on that someday. So, but yeah, get on us, get at us on all those social channels. You can also email us at nomads of at gmail.com. With any questions, comments, anything. Listen, if you've listened this long to this long ass episode, then just send us an email. Anything. Just shoot us something and we'll read it on the show. Uh, I promise. So, all that good stuff. Follow us, email us, get at us. Nice. All right. You got it. You got anything, Dave? Um, no. Don't, don't let your visas expire. Uh, watch out for the red lasers from the sky. And if you like the podcast, tell a friend. <laughs> And have a week. Tell a friend. And it's probably good to have a buddy who's really good at figuring up puzzles and playing video games, because you never know. Just in case. Yep. I think I would die instantly in, if I was in the show. But, I probably would die yeah. instantly as well, to be honest with you. <laughs> Same rules as Zombieland. Num- rule number one, good cardio. Yeah, good good yeah. cardio. The, those physical games are no joke. Yeah, dude, no joke. A lot of sprinting going on, jumping and diving. All right, well, that's it. I'm out of here. See you. Peace out.